going on, Breaking Brown fam? How's everybody doing? We got a lot to cover tonight, but I'm going to try to give everybody a little bit of time to stream in um, so that we don't have to, we don't, I don't want anybody to be lost this evening because this evening, this evening tonight is very important. There are a lot of things that have to be laid to rest. Um, there are a lot of lies that have to be refuted. There's a lot, um, there's just a lot we have to do. And so before we do that, as usual, if you're watching this, as I give people time um, to, to, you will need your libations tonight. As I give people time to stream in, please hit the like button if you're here. Please subscribe if you have not. Please tag that bell for me. Hit that bell so that, so that you know when I go live that you get a notification. I sure would appreciate that. What's going on, fam? What's going on, Mike? What's going on, Philip? What's going on, Cosmo? What's going on, everybody? What's going on, Sonny Strong? What's going on, the mods? Appreciate y'all. Might need you in here tonight. Um, and before I really get started, I just want to say to anybody I mentioned, um, if anybody I mentioned in this video, if you want to call in and you do not and you cannot get through, I don't want any more excuses. Um, so you can email me at the break. I'll be checking my email and I have a number that you can bypass the line if you're one of the people that I mentioned tonight and you want to have your say. Because I don't want well, uh, you bet you don't ever debate anybody. You can call in. I just want you to know that. Also, if you want to donate to what we do, um, you know, what happens here and everything that makes what happens here happen, you can go to donatebrown.com. You can also go to patreon.com slash whycarnell. Um, you, can, you can do all that good stuff. Also, please go to subscribe to Brown. Uh, dot com and just add your email so I have your email you know your email list um you can go to breakingbrown.com also and make a monthly subscription however you want to do whatever you want to do so so fam we got something that we have to talk about but it requires a little bit of context um as I allow people to kind of stream in uh this requires a little bit of context and and the conversation that I'm that I'm going to have so I'm going to if the river don't rise, the creek don't rise, child. I am going to um, I'm going to play a video because but, but but let me preface let me preface this video as people stream in. Let me preface this video by you all know we had a conversation about lovey, right? We had a conversation about lovey. We did that um, on the last Breaking Brown episode. And she got in a lot of trouble about Tevin Campbell, but it really wasn't about Tevin Campbell. It was about who she is and who she's pretending to be. And it's not about whether or not she's black. It's about what she's doing here in terms of, in terms of her role that she's playing. And it's a, it's a wider conversation that we have to have. So what we have to do, though, to get the context, you know, Lovey is this, for those of you all who don't know, I don't, you know, she is this, um, she used to be known as Awesomely Lovey. She is a, a, a humorist. Um, some say a, a sorcerer. I think she's called us. I don't know what that means. She did scandal, um, really her claim to fame was, was these scandal um, summaries or, and live tweets and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that kind of catapulted her to a, to a space where she felt that she could kind of just, 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 you know, just, she could, she could speak for us. And, and so we're having a conversation now about who gets to speak for American blacks. Who gets to speak for the sentence of slaves? And so a lot of people are saying, well, you're calling in, you're calling in to, you, you are questioning her blackness. This ain't about that. But we're, we're now having these little silly arguments, and I'm very disappointed by them. But I have to give some context to this. And since we got some people in, I, I want to give you, I'm going to play this video. I'm going to try to make it a little bit bigger for you. I'm going to play this video, and I'm going to come back to it. I'm, I'm going to break it up into snippets, but I'm going to play the whole thing first. I'm going to play this whole little screed. Now, the screed is coming from someone called Amanda Seals is her name. She's also an actress or something of that nature. And her whole thing is, who gets the question? Who speaks for black people? Who are you? Are you the blackness police? Do you, do you decide who speaks? Who decides who speaks? I think anybody who has melanin and who has a good heart should speak. It's something like that. But I want to let you judge for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to play it and I'm going to come back. And I'm going to, I'm going to destroy it. So let me play it first and we come right back. What does someone who is allowed to speak about blackness and their blackness, what does that person look like? Where is that person from? 
Some people are like, well, Lovey can't talk because she wasn't born here, even though she grew up here since she was nine years old. Amanda can't talk about being a black woman because she light skin. You know, can Tiffany had to talk about being a black woman? She from the hood? Nope, because her father is Eritrean. What about Issa? Can Issa talk about being a black woman? Well, I don't know. Her dad is from Senegal and she did live there for a few years. So is she black enough for y'all? What about Angela Rye? Can she speak about being a black woman? Can she be a commentator for culture, for black culture? Well, you know, she light skin and she comes from a, a, an elite background. So no, she can't either. Who the f can? Who can? Tell me, tell me, the, tell me the formula. As far as I'm concerned, if you're a black person living a black experience and have a love for black people and black culture, then your commentary, if it's coming from an honest and informed place, should be revered and respected, not constantly attempted to be undermined and challenged without cause. Understand what she's saying to you in that one clip. Understand what she's saying to me. Understand what she's saying to all of us. And I'm going to break it down piece by piece. But please understand what she's saying to you. I want to couch it in one thing, one thing that you can just hold on to throughout the rest of the show. She's telling you slavery don't matter. The only thing that matters is melanin. And if somebody with melanin comes along and wants to have an opinion in our country about what it means to be American DOS, about the lineage that defines us in this country, if somebody wants to talk about the justice claim that we have because the free labor that built this country, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is melanin and you black and you and you and it comes from a, a, a good place. That's what she's telling you what you have to hear see what we have to start doing is hear what someone is actually saying as opposed to what the kind of nice and words they're putting in you have to hear exactly what they're saying now this is only a 60 second this is only like a 60 second clip that was on instagram and it's, it was on the shade room now we're gonna get to the shade room in a minute because i have a lot to say about that too there's a lot to be said about who gets to talk. It's a good question. And you know what? I'm really happy to answer it. Now, this is just a seven-second clip. I want you to listen to it. This is the first part of it. Listen to this. Let's just take this apart and deconstruct this and unpeel this piece by piece. Does someone who is allowed to speak about blackness and their blackness, what does that person look like? Where is that person from? What does someone who is... Listen. You get it all wrong. This is not about, this is not about what somebody, what somebody looks like. This is not about your presentation. This is about lineage. So pay attention, Amanda says, if you're watching, let's pay attention. You might learn something about the lineage that you say you're a part of, but you're anchored in something else. This is not about that. This is about not how you look. This is about your lineage. Now, let me, let me say something. Fam, you know, I always ask a question because of after after Amanda Seals did that, one of the things that she did, and she thought she was being real slick, she started she started trying to give us a Black History lesson. She went on Instagram and pointed out immigrants um, who immigrated here, who had been leaders and civil rights leaders, and and she circled stuff, and she really thought she was being real slick and real smart. Now I want you to understand something that puts that in the context of what we're supposed to be doing. What do I always say, fam? When somebody says something or comes to you and starts talking, I say the first question is what? The first question that you ask, who are you? Now, she gave us all that context. She gave us all that information. What she did not give us was her own background. Well, that's very interesting, Amanda Seals. Why didn't you give us your own background? Why didn't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What was the problem with that? So I go, you know me, I go look you up. And what I see, what I see is that you are, you are a Grenadian American. Now understand something. Understand, understand, understand one thing. I really want you to understand something. When people do these little Wikipedias and all this little stuff like this, what you have and what you have to understand is that they can change this. They can change what this means. Like you can go, if, if the Wikipedia page is your page, you can go to your Wikipedia page and, page and make changes. You don't have to define yourself as Grenadian American. If you want to talk about being one of us, why didn't you define, since everything in your life is defined by the, 
by the DOS struggle in this country. Everything you eat off is the DOS plate. You don't eat off a Grenadian plate. You eat off a DOS plate. You eat off something that we paid in this country coming from all the way chattel slavery. And you can say, well, Yvette, she has one parent who is, who is, who is DOS. Doesn't that matter? It matters in the context of your anchoring. If you have one parent who is DOS and you are half Grenadian, why are you anchoring yourself in Grenada and not, you could have just put African American. If we all the same and we all get to talk and we all get to have the same conversation, why are you anchoring yourself in something other than African American? See, this doesn't make sense. You're trying to play the field. You're trying to have you both ways. You're trying to be Grenada and be us and be everything. She has two parents and chose Grenada. She chose Grenadia over DOS. Understand that you have two parents. They're all kind of clips. You going back to Grenada, going back to Spice Island, all kind of stuff you doing. You have to understand. If there's nothing else that you understand, fam, you have to understand that there's a game being played and it's played for us to lose. And she's playing the game. So you got you. you see, this is, and this is all coordinated, family. Understand that this is all coordinated. This is all coordinated. You and Lovey and Issa and all y'all, all y'all are all, all y'all either African or African, and y'all are all having these conversations and navigating, and we ain't navigating nothing as a group. But y'all all navigating. That's the re you probably on the phone. Love girl, I, uh, I don't know what they talking about, girl, but I'm gonna go out for you. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for you. And then they're gonna share it on the shade room because they black immigrants too, girl. I I'm, I got this together. Don't you worry. I'm gonna set this up for you. This is a coordination. So let me just let me just address one question and, and just talk about when you I just want you to see how she has anchored herself Grenadian American that's how you've anchored yourself that is how you have positioned yourself this is how you have positioned yourself and you want to know who gets to speak well I can tell you who don't get to speak let me tell you first who don't get to speak and then we're gonna talk about your anchoring let me tell you why you don't get to speak you ask the question who gets to speak I'm gonna answer you this is from the interview right here that you're looking at this is from the interview I stumbled and this is her and the, and the person asking her the interview is asking her I stumbled across an old poem you wrote called Oreo while trying to figure out how to phrase a question about the process experience that drive a Grenadian American to study African American culture to postgraduate level. What are some of the positives you have gained from your bicultural experience? Well, there is an identity crisis amongst African Americans due to living in a country that was built on our backs. Wait a minute, but you just defined yourself as Grenadian American but still fails to fully recognize us all as equal. It is my opinion, a constant inner conflict to love our home but hate how it came to be. I feel very fortunate to have my Grenadian roots to also call home. See, what did I tell you all? Because that has, because, listen to the rest of this. Because though it may have taken Grenada centuries to gain independence, I do not feel we have the same crisis of identity of descendants of slaves in America. You think you're better than us. We do not have the same crisis of identity. See, you're anchoring yourself. What do you mean we? See, what, at what point you want to say that you have one parent? You want to say I have an I have a I have a DOS parent, but then when you say we, you say we Grenadians do not have the same identity crisis as the sense of slaves. Also, it has allowed me to have a varied perspective of life in the diaspora. You have anchored yourself. I'm not the one who's telling you that you're something other than other than DOS. You've already told us that you've anchored yourself in this. You have washed yourself of the lostness. And that's what it means. Let me slow down, fam. Let me slow down and just say something. See, one of the things that you can do, one of the things that you can do, see, most of us, though, I saw a great statistic that said over 80% of American black DOS, we have four grandparents who come from slavery, you know, in terms of that lineage, through all the way Jim Crow, Reconstruction, that's our lineage. When you have a set of grandparents, a parent and then a set of grandparents who come from another country, what that allows you to do is to anchor yourself outside of the lostness and brokenness 
of being a descendant of slaves. So you get to wash that lostness off of you and anchor yourself in something else. And that's why when you see Africans, they're not usually Africans. They're usually Africans. They have anchored themselves in or wherever, Caribbean. They have anchored themselves in something outside of our collective lostness and then want to claim it. We need to ask, what is your anchor culture? When you meet people say, well, I'm having half, I need to know what your anchor culture is. I ran into a guy on, online on my Facebook yesterday who I blocked because he wanted to say, well, I'm half and half, I'm half Ghanaian or I'm half black. But I go on your page and it's all Ghana all day. There is no DOS uh, 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 kind of discussion of that lineage. You got everything from hotel to Ghana to everything else. You have totally extricated yourself from us. But then you get mad when I say you ain't one of us. You made that choice. You cannot be a African and call yourself Nigerian and you ain't never been to Nigeria. But if you are like this chick from Granada and you go back all the time and that's what you anchor yourself in, then that's who you are. You can't call yourself Granada and then say you want to be able to speak for DOS. No, sweetheart. You've already made your choice. Now I need you to live with it. Don't come on here and be talking about why I don't get to speak. Why don't you go speak for Granada? Tell me what's going on in Granada. Tell me about how y'all won everything from the British and when you won your, your revo the revolution. You can tell me all that. You can speak about that all day since that's where you anchored yourself. But no, you cannot speak speak for me how could how dare you think you can speak for me your life is built on the blood the space that you're in in terms of everything that you're doing right now is built on our blood and you have anchored yourself as a Grenadian while living in this country and eating off the plate of the sentence of slaves and you ought to be ashamed of yourself that little weird screed you did your entire access to the world comes through America you know, America, you got a passport. You can go anywhere. You can do anything. And it's, there's no restrictions. Eat the world up if you have the wealth. We don't have the wealth. That's the problem. But you can eat the world up. So you come over here and take it, but then you culturally anchor yourself and wash yourself off from us and kind of pretend like we're not the same. That's the, you know, and, and pretend that we're the same. So you can one day say, I'm, I, my Grenadian heritage gives me a, a, a better identity and understanding of the diaspora and, and I don't have the identity crisis of, of, of African Americans and then come back and be like, why I don't get to speak? I don't get to speak for black people in America. You, you damn skip, you don't. And I'm being very clear on why you don't. Not about a look. And it's not about all those wiki peas. This is about lineage. This is about this is about this is about chattel. This is about coming from chattel slavery. This is about the justice claim that you get from building the richest country in the world. And this is about how everybody can't have access to that justice claim. It's not about how you look, child. Don't nobody care about how you look. Certainly not me or anybody else who's watching this on Breaking Brown. Your father's lineage line. And where is your daddy? Because I don't see him anywhere. I hear a lot of references to everybody else. We're not a what? You know, you, it's kind of like Kamala Harris. These people don't mention, like, they talk about their, 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 their DOS line, but then you can't find no one. They don't mention them, no accolades. We can talk about that, too. We can talk about that all day long. See, because, and one thing I want you to do Fam, you have to understand that people reveal themselves. And I love when people reveal themselves. There's always a moment when people reveal themselves. And I say, aha, there goes the big reveal. So go to her Twitter. And I find this. If you're buying Jordans and Nike suits, but you're sleeping on an air mattress, you're losing. If you're buying Jordans and Nike suits, but you don't have a passport, you're losing. And so I see these, I see these tweets, fam. Understand. Here's another one. We're just going to go through them. We're just going to go through them. We're just going to go through them. And we're going to have a conversation about them. I see this one too. If you're buying Jordans and Nike suits but don't have a credit card, you're losing. If, if you're buying Jordans and Nike suits but you don't know your credit score, you're losing. And then she defines what winning is. This is somebody who doesn't understand DOS and DOS life. Understand that. This is, this is from a very Caribbean point of view. And, and if, you're, if you're working a side hustle to support your dream hustle, you're winning. If you're broadening your mind, you're winning. All this weird stuff. Let me just say this. 
You can't you can't use DOS resources, call yourself Grenadian, then be asking why you can't speak for us. But you you got to go be Grenadian. But let me just put this up here. Let me show you something. You also, you don't get to, dis see, let me just say something Let me before I put that up. You do not, black people are poor. What those tweets show me is that you don't understand black poverty. The middle black family is worth less than 1700 It used to be 1700 It's probably slid now to about 15 or 14 If you do not, let me be clear. If you do not understand black poverty, you don't understand black people. And that's what that nonsense about buying Jordans was about. Because look at the number of black people who, when they talk about, when she talk about get a bank account and get a credit card, look at the number of black, the, the percentages here in terms of black people being unbanked. And this was, this is, we're talking 2013 and 2015. This is what black life looks like. So you have somebody who here is anchored in being Grenadian and doesn't understand our life. You don't understand who we are. You don't understand black life and you want to ask why you can't speak for black people? You know, the, Antonio Moore did a, did a, did a study with Duke Professor Sandy Darity, which undermined all of what she said about wealth and financial literacy. Everything she said from, and if you want to talk about it, we can talk about the color of law. We can talk about the color of money. I, listen, I had the conversation. I spoke with Rustine. I met with Rustine in Louisville, right? I, you know, I've, I've had that come. I'm having another conversation when I go back there in September. I'm working on things. Like, have you read The Color of Money? You're just running around talking and then I'm wondering why you can't speak. Why do you get to speak? Because you have melanin in your skin. You have one DOS parent, but you don't anchor yourself in that at all. You've washed yourself of that, but you want to speak and you want to wonder why you don't get to speak? No, go fight the Brits. Like, DOS people in this country, we fight and we have fought. Why don't you go fight the Brits? Like, we, we still fighting here. And you ain't fighting. You just want, why well, I don't get to talk? Why well, I don't get to speak? Who tell, who, 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 who decides that? You got to stop running. Y'all some running people, man. I'm so tired of y'all running. But here's a, here's a, this is another very quick clip. This is just a very quick clip because, like I said, it's from Instagram and it was just a bunch of, it's, it was just a bunch of cobbled together mess. So I want you to just listen to this a few seconds long and I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about it. People are like, well, Lovey can't talk because she wasn't born here, even though she grew up here since she was nine years. Some people are like, well, Lovey can't talk because she was Lovey. Lovey can't talk. Why can't you that? Why can't Lovey talk? Because she's been here. She was here in her formative years. Well, let me just say something. Let me just come back. I, let me just contrast something for you. When I try to talk to you, when I try to bring something to the table for you. I take what I do here with these lights and this equipment and this mixer and, 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 and this little audio set and this Ultra Game Pro and all this stuff I have around me that you can't see. I take this very seriously. I take what I do here very seriously. You all, I thank you all. You all finance the equipment. I take the research very seriously. This is a very serious project for me. So I am very disappointed when I see somebody who just gets in front of a camera for one minute and just, just, for a minute and that's it. And you get a million likes because you just, you just ranted on some nonsense. It makes no sense. You got to understand that what I do here, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, 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 I'm not trying to, I'm a humble person, but what I do here is fix a meal, give a little appetizer, give some dinner, and I try to make it presentable and, and the inf information be complete. That's the reason I read the books. That's the reason I listen to podcasts. So what I'm telling you is you can't listen to nobody. When I cook a full meal, when I cook, when I, I cook, I cook appetizer, dinner, dessert, you can't listen to somebody who just throws some grits in the hot water and the grits ain't even ready. Well, I don't know. I don't know about them grits. That's what you do when you just grab your camera phone and stop rant, start ranting because Lovey's your girl or because Issa's your girl and because you want to get back on the show, don't you? You want to get back on the show. You trying to get hooked up. You trying to, why you didn't tell us that you was on the show? Ain't that you right there? Why you didn't tell us you was on the show? All this stuff should have been out front. 
when you made the comment. You trying to make sure you trying to make sure Issa Rae pick you back up. How come you ain't say so? That's insecure. That's the insecure show. So she's on insecure talking about, of course, Issa Rae gets to talk about this. Well, of course you want a job. And you're a little long in the tooth, sweetheart. So, of course you want a job. Of course you want to stand for Issa Rae. You want to stand for Levy. Of course you do. But why you ain't tell people that? Why you didn't tell people that, like, I work with these people? Don't nobody just know who you are. You ain't famous. So, don't nobody just know when they see you who you are and just, boom. Okay, I, oh, I know who that. You, child, honey, hush. So, let me just say. We have to, even with Issa Rae, like we have to talk about, you You know, what y'all want to do. You say, why don't I get to speak for you? No, why don't you talk about, since you want to anchor yourself in that, you talk about Granada. Issa Rae, you want to talk about, you want to talk about American DOS blackness and all this stuff. No, why don't you tell me about your Senegalese daddy? Why do they never in the show? Don't none of y'all want to talk about y'all stuff. Lovey don't want to talk about Nigeria. Everybody just want to talk about us and judge us and, and, and kind of, and kind of culture vote to us. That's a problem. Y'all really think that the only people who can do that are, are, are like are like are like people with not met with no melanin? That like other people ain't doing that too. We never hear about like you 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 know with Issa Rae. We never hear about your your you know like your mama's from Louisiana. Like I don't ever hear any Louisiana stories. Is it because maybe you're anchored in being Senegalese and not? I mean, your daddy said some real nasty stuff about why you, you might as well major in fly out. Something he said about, something nasty he said about you majoring in African-American history. And if your daddy said that, I know he said some other stuff too. And so when she talks about Lovey, when she talks about Lovey and well, well, can Lovey talk? Listen, from 2010, Lovey, and she says she don't use, I don't use the word. And a later blog post, she said, I don't use the word, word of Carter. You did, though. You already know you can't talk for me. You've already, you already have a tribe. Now, if I try to go, like I said, if I try to say I'm Europe, everybody will be like, no, you're not. You, you a black American. You better get somewhere and sit down. And rightfully so, I'm not. But you need to get somewhere and sit down, too. Of course you don't get to speak for me. How I got a mama who's a sharecropper and a daddy born out of poverty and you get to spend black American power and you get to speak for me. Of course you don't. How do you, how do you, I don't understand how this works. How do you get to have a car and a driver and a maid and come here to a, to a people who are broken, a group of broken people because we come from chattel slavery and say, why don't I get to speak for you? Are you slow? What are you talking about? Why don't you get to speak for me? Of course you don't get to speak for me. You are the elite of your country. I'm fighting the elite of my country. We are not on the same team. You are not ideologically on the same page as me. You're not morally on the same page as me. You don't even understand blackness in that context. So what are you talking about? And then you got a scholarship. And then for the scholarship, you wrote something about how you didn't agree with reparations. But you shouldn't have got a scholarship. You stole it. All this stuff, see, all the stuff that was given us black people, all the stuff that was that, that, that our people fought for and bled for was given us because white people said, you know what, we you know what, we have to empathize. We have to have some empathy for these people because we did this to them. The empathy was for us, it wasn't for you. It was never for you. But you don't care. You don't care that it was never designed for you. You're gonna take it anyway. And then you want to come, not only do you come and take it, you don't just, you don't just take it and tiptoe like the tiptoe burglar and just take it like Pink Panther. You want to take it and then be like, why didn't I get to speak for you? Are you serious? You already steal and then you want to be like, why you can't speak for me? Are you, are you serious right now? None of this makes any sense. The middle, the, looks like the middle native black family, where I look at this chart, it's probably worth about 200 liquid. The middle Nigerian family is worth 100K. And so you, you're worth more. You got more money. You over here. And then you want to say, why don't I get to speak for you? She know why she don't get to speak for me. And then I got a question. I got questions. You're trying to speak for me, but I got questions. You talk about, you know, in this, in this thing, in this, in this, you talk about right here, you know, that you, you know, not a cod or a hold me, blah, blah, blah. You Yoruba. Well, well, here's a question. Did you say, did your people sell slaves? I need to know. It's a, it's a question that I need answered. It's a question that we should all need answered. The, the article I put up a few weeks ago, 
about Henry Louis Gates said 90% of, of, of the Africans who were sold into like, like for slavery, like were sold by other Africans. So I, I'm not saying that you did. I'm just saying that I need to know if your people, them Yoruba people you're bragging about, I need to know if they, if they sold my people. I need to know. Because what you ain't going to do, what you're not going to do, what's not going to happen is that you're not going to come here into my country, and it's not a transient country. You're not going to come into my country, right, and eat off my plate. You're not going to sell me over here then eat off the plate that was built off of us being disadvantaged. So you get to eat the disadvantage when you send us over here. I need to know that if you got some other money, your parents had an oil revenue or whatever, that's fine. But you need to let me know. We should be asking everybody that comes over here. If you're elite, if you had a, if you had a most, most are in terms of like what they had, like love you reveal. I need to know. You got some questions you got to answer. Come on. And if you don't answer the questions, I just assume it's the truth. And what we can't assume, black people, and this is something that we like to make a lot of us, a lot of assumptions. That was in Los Angeles. The, the the court I just gave you about the middle black family. Um, that was a it was a it was a um, I think it was an inequality. But you can check that out about Nigerian versus black wealth. Um, and it was it was a loss. It was a study that honed in on Los Angeles. In Boston, the number is eight dollars for for black for descendants of slaves. So, and we need more studies. Um, that kind of that kind of deal with that what I see See because what the New Yorker article pointed out remember the New Yorker article we dealt with my great great my great grandfather the Nigerian slave trader. y'all remember that What that shows us is that they're not like us in the sense that there's no mass incarceration epidemic Right, they didn't have reconstruction the same way that we they didn't have chattel slavery They didn't have all these breaking up of families so they know exactly where their family's money comes from. So it's not like asking me or somebody else, where's your granddaddy? Well, you might not know because we're broken in terms of what happened. But they know. So we have to start not being afraid to ask the question. Where did they come from? How'd they make their money? Well, your people. Well, your people in the flesh trade. Because there's no way that white people couldn't have been in the flesh trade without Africans. Y'all, the white people had whole ports set up. And they came into these countries as minorities. Y'all was catching people. So with that, that driver that you had, the maid and all that, was that, was that residual, you know, a hierarchy built off? I just need, just answer the question. I'm not saying how you got to answer, but you got to answer the question. You're going to have to answer me. And you're going to have to answer us. Why would you watch a show if somebody sold you into slavery? We don't even know if we don't even know what's going on or whether Easter Ray would. Why would you watch a show? You wouldn't watch a show of a white supremacist. If a white supremacist told you that they daddy and great grand great 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 grandpappy or great great grandpappy in this country owned slaves, you turn that off. So why would you do the same thing here? It don't make no sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't see how it should make any sense to you. You have to tell me. And honestly, like, given what we know about the slave trade now, you shouldn't even be able to say, like, Yoruba around me. Like, if you, it's almost like you should be in a beauty salon, and if you say, yeah, girl, I'm Yoruba, everybody should just turn to you and be like, you need to leave. Like, no, 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 no. You, you, you need to learn, like, that's nothing you say around us. Like, as, as DOS... As, as American black descendants of slaves, we don't have no standards for how we need to be treated by people. How you build a country with free labor and all these other transients come in from everywhere and you don't have any standards in terms of ideology, in terms of respect, in terms of you got to get in line, in terms of like, listen, we decide how to, we decide, we, we built the pay, we built the path for you. We decide how this thing goes. You don't get to speak for us. You get to hush and get in line. We don't do that. Why? Why? Why don't we take advantage of what it means to be American? I would never try. I could never. And I would never try to go to any other country. African or Caribbean or otherwise. And try to. I don't care if I got that. Nine, eight, seven, six. My people's bones ain't buried here. I'm not going to try to tell you I should speak for you. So I got here. I, I get. So I get to Nigeria at the age of nine. Or I get to. Eretria, whatever the age of nine, and I, I why, why I can't speak for you? What you talking about, and you, and we all wrong. Come on, man. 
you know, you have to look. If you haven't, if you haven't read, if you're gonna disagree with me this evening, and don't do it if you have not read my great grandfather, the Nigerian slave trader. Just don't do it because they passed down the chains. They didn't just sell your people because maybe they needed the what. They passed down the chains from their family. And the woman says she asked her father, "Are you ashamed?" Of our great grandfather. And he said no. It took a lot of courage to be a slave trader. They are proud of what they did. To our people. It's not a case of anybody making them do it. You have to understand what that means. And you have to understand that our enemies come in a lot of different shades. It's not just this case. This binary where the only people who can be enemies to us are white people. This is a, this, and this is in the New Yorker. This is not in the Daily Caller or some right-wing magazine. This is the New Yorker, people. Understand what this says. You have to understand what this says and what this means. And you also have to understand this has nothing, this, said, this, this has nothing at all to do with blackness. Nobody said you ain't black. Everybody said you're not a member of my tribe. Just like in Nigeria, you got a bunch of different tribes, right? Y'all all black, but y'all got a bunch of different tribes. We got tribes here too. One of them is the DOS tribe, and you ain't in it. It's not about being black. See, with Lovey, I can't tell whether she's stupid or she think I'm stupid. But either way, it's a problem. You're a problem. It is what it is. You can feel how you feel. I don't really care how you feel, but the truth is the truth. And I think the problem is, the reason that y'all are getting so upset it's because those masks are finally falling off. You thought this was going to keep going and keep going and keep going. Nobody would catch on to this scam. But it's coming. And you know, the funniest thing that I kind of keep thinking about is like how Lovey has this whole thing about judging you. I'm judging you. And the only thing I can, the only thing I can really kind of say is that you are... DOS don't really understand that what Lovey is judging, she's judging our confusion and our failure and the consequences of like how coming from slavery have caught like the, the, like what coming from sl chattel slavery has caused. I don't think anybody understands. You don't get a right to judge me. You know, you have no right to stand in judgment of me. And why are you standing in judgment of me? Anyway? Why don't you go judge Nigeria, highest income, highest, highest income inequality anywhere in the world? I think y'all have bypassed India now in terms of, uh, why don't you go judge the corruption there? Why are everybody over here judging us and trying to make money off DOS and DOS culture? And you, you, you do, you go to school and you memorize it and you look at Twitter and you figure it out. And you No, go judge your own thing. You said I'm not a Kata. You said I'm your all the way whatever you said child i don't care go do that then go do your own thing don't judge me don't judge my people you don't get to judge us you ain't got no bones buried here your people ain't buried you don't get to judge us and everything that you have here is because of us and you really don't get to judge me if we find out we sold you here then we got to ask, if we find out that you sold us here, like if we do the research and we find out that you sold us here, then I got to ask what you're doing here. Then we got to have that conversation. It's an uncomfortable conversation, but if you sold us here, you got to go. You're just like white people. You can't come here and mark African American. Why don't you mark other on your applications? You know that this LBJ designed, aff designed affirmative action for us. It wasn't designed for you. It wasn't designed, but you still mark it. But you, but then, but 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 when it suits you, you're Nigerian. Oh no, I'm not them. But when it's time to do fill out an application, all of a sudden you us. This is scavengerism. Scavengerism is not what it is not is not allyship. Scavengerism is stealing. It's not allyship, and that's what that is. So by what right do you get to speak for DOS? We speak for ourselves. You have no right to speak for us. You have no right to judge us. We speak for ourselves and we judge ourselves. The only thing you can do is help. The only thing you can do is get in line. You either help or hush or leave. You don't get to speak for us to answer your question. You don't get to do anything for us. We speak for ourselves. We define ourselves. You don't get to do any of that. And it's not about being black. 
you you black as everybody else. You black as anybody. You oh, it's a lot of black people in the world. We're not saying you're not black, even though we we've talked before about race being a creation. But we said you black, but that that's not the same thing as being a part of our tribe. You're just not a part of our tribe. You don't get to lead. We have a we have a claim. I don't think we understand. We have a claim against the wealthiest country in the world. You don't get to keep coming over here trying to give yourselves that claim. Every time you take affirmative action, you're trying to give yourselves that claim. Mark other on your application. Mark white. Mark Asian. I don't care, but don't mark us. Because you're not us. Can't come here from a perfectly intact family and all of that and then mark our stuff and where we come from. You don't get to do that. I don't know why we never before saw that as scavengerism. But we do now. And the real upset that we're seeing is that I see you. And I see you very clearly. I went to Howard University. I see you very clearly. Now let's go to clip three really, really quick. This is a quick, this is a, this is a very, 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 very quick clip that we'll be able to go through real quick. The child just still ranting and crazy. So we're just going to go through that. It's like a few seconds. Well, Lovey can't talk because she wasn't born here, even though she grew up here since she was nine oh, years on. old. Amanda can't talk, about, talk about being a black woman. She from the hood. Nope, because her father is Eritrean. What about Issa? Can Issa talk about being a black woman? Well, I don't know. Her dad is from Senegal and she did live there for a few years. So is she black enough for y'all? What about Angela Rye? Can she speak about being a black woman? Can she be a commentator for culture, for black culture? Well, you know, she light skin and she comes from uh, a, an elite background. So no, she can't either. Tiffany had to talk about being a black woman. I think this, I think, I think she had crazy. Listen, understand something. Understand something. First of all, I'm light skinned. So I ain't never and I ain't never heard nobody say that you as a light skinned person, we come from slaves and slave masters. That's clear. And we had a whole bunch of other stuff with immigrants where there were communities where before the Irish became white, we have a whole cobbled together history that you obviously don't understand. And that's fine. You confused and silly and distraught and making a mess of, of, of our history. I get it. But see, what you won't do. What you won't do is lie. And what you have to understand is that the person who got in trouble for talking about light-skinned people a while back was lovey. That wasn't me. And you have to understand the whole thing with Angela Rye, what I said about Angela Rye, I didn't say anything about her 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 being light-skinned or, 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 or rich. I said that Angela Rye was wrong in terms of Trump. Angela Rye said we're not all poor. The data says we're all working class poor. I said her data was wrong. And Angela Ross said, me and my friends doing good. And I said, you can't understand a wealth position based on you and your friends. You, Amanda Seals, are a very confused person. I don't understand how you get through college like that with that kind of comprehension problem. Nobody ever said that, she, that, uh, that, that Angela Rye isn't black or she's light-skinned. I said that the way she was understanding Trump when she said, when Trump said, well, we're not, well, well, well black people are poor, what do you have to lose? I said that we should have said, you're right, we are poor, and what are you going to do about it? And then Angela Rye says, well, no, I'm poor, I got friends, I got, I got friends, and I'm saying, I, I got friends isn't the way that we understand data. How did you miss that? Did, are you intentionally misconstruing what was said, or are you just like too, too daft to like, not too, to like really understand it? You should address that in your next little Instagram post. If you're feeling bad, if you're feeling funky, you could address that. And then regarding Tiffany Haddish, I never said that Tiffany Haddish wasn't black. I said I wished her well. I said she came from the ghetto and she came from a hard life of foster homes. What I said was, again, you have a comprehension problem that is not my problem. But what I said was, I said Tiffany Haddish should think Instead of thanking her deadbeat Eritrean father who was never there for her and let her go in foster homes, I said she should thank DOS female comics who paved the way for her to be there. I said any kind of recognition should have been to the DOS people instead of the father. It's not like you had an Eritrean father who was there all the way and taking you to audition and doing stuff for you. Then by all means, honor him. But why would you honor a deadbeat? If a black woman honored her deadbeat father, y'all would be all over her. See, you, you just don't understand stuff. You just, you so, you out here trying to cape so hard for lovey and get another part on Insecure and all that kind of stuff because you heading towards 40, you got a problem. But your problem ain't my problem and your problem speaks to why you don't get to speak for us. If you don't understand that, then it's just kind of too bad. That's not my issue. 
you know, you have to, you, you, you have to understand what's going on here. You know, this little silly thing, this little silly, 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 silly thing that we're dealing with that we really shouldn't, that we really shouldn't have to deal with. Is is all because like I don't even know it, it, it's the wildest thing. It is the wildest thing I have ever seen. The 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 like the amount of scavengerism that I'm seeing and the amount of dilution. This is the this is a this is the dilution of our claim. And I'm gonna just finish up this little last little bit um, before I go on to the other parts. Um, before I go on, let me just let you just rant on with this weirdness where you just shake the camera and that's deep. Let me just put that up. Can. Who can? Tell me, tell me, tell me the formula. As far as I'm concerned, if you're a black person living a black experience and have a love for black people and black culture, then your commentary, if it's coming from an honest and informed place, should be revered and respected. Not constant. Yeah, that's because you slow, though. Like, that's because, like, I did a whole experiment here one day and I said, look, I got markers here. I, I, I'll do it again for the slow people. For the people in the back. Listen, you got, you, I, got, I got markers. I got all kind of markers. These are all different color markers. There is no kind of solidarity just based on the fact that these markers are not, a, are not this white crayon. Right? So you got all of this. There's no solidarity here. There's nothing that it means. You don't get to talk or be DOS just because you're not the white crayon. How hard is that? How hard is that for you? Read color of law. Read the color of money. Do some work. Put in some work and stop doing garbage Instagram photos. And, and listen, Issa Rae, stop doing garbage TV. I'm sick of all of this. This stuff, is you're not even in like the top 25 in terms of, in terms of like what's on HBO on that day. Give me a break, man. This is a soap opera thing you know we don't expect soap operas to be great because they're soap operas it's little old women and teenagers watching them yeah but that's what this stuff is you don't even break into it it's just it's just understand black women we're building these people we need to own who we're building and why we're building them why are we building other DOS women why not so everybody who gets everybody who gets a perch is, is, is somebody from somewhere else who is anchored in somewhere else? What are we doing? We're responsible for this. And we need to own this. And you got to stop straddling the fence. I'm sick of that. I had somebody on my Instagram page talking about Willie Vet. You know, I watch both of y'all. I watch you and I watch her. And I want to see what you have to say. Screw you. I done said enough for you not to watch Amanda Seals and be following her on Instagram. This isn't something where you just keep getting to watch a fight. You got to pick sides. You are everybody going to lose. We're going to lose everything if we don't start picking a side. And our side is the DOS side. If we don't start picking a side and say, we are these people. This is who we are. And this is where we come from. This is what we built. This is who we stand for. If we don't start doing that, we are screwed. There is no way you compete with this group of people. They come from uh, most of the majority of Nigerians who come here are college educated. We are less than 20% college educated. They know that. Stop playing this game. We're going to get to that in just a second. You got to understand that. We can't, you know, everybody had a problem. Oh, Monique said something about Roseanne. This is way before that. You can't, we can't build Monique. I had Monique on my show. But you can't build her up because y'all are obsessed with some other stuff. I don't know why. Obsessed with weirdness. It's a way. Really? There ain't no good script. Does anybody know about script reading? This is just a, some good cinematography. These are not good scripts. What are we doing? I don't. I don't think we understand. You know. Sometimes I don't think we understand, even as us, what we built as 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 DOS, what we built, and why we're not the same. I know you all remember the case for reparations from Ta-Nehisi Coates. But, but there was a very good, a very, very good line in there, which, which really went to like our claim. And I want to just read that. It says the wealth accorded America by slavery was not just in what the slaves pulled from the land, but in the slaves themselves. In 1860, in 1860, slaves as an asset were worth more than all of America's manufacturing, all of the railroads. All of the productive capacity of the United States put together. 
the Yale historian David Blight noted. Slaves were the single largest by far financial asset or property in the entire American economy. So no, if you don't come from that, you don't get to come here. If, you, if your ancestors did not build with their blood, sweat, and labor, not only the richest country in the world, but when you look at it, we help build the global economy as well. If you didn't do that, if your people didn't do that, then you don't get to claim it. And no, you don't get to jump back over this side. You done told us you're Grenadian, so go do your Granada thing. You don't get to claim it. Am I clear? I don't know how much clearer I can be. There is no sameness. And understand that this sameness is an attack on the reparations argument. If we say that all brown people are the same, whether they're Caribbean or Grenadian or Mexican or, 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 or Ghanaian or South African, that is an attack on any claim we have for reparations. And understand that if we don't get reparations, if we don't get some kind of carve out, we're cooked. And the highest income inequality, when everything was built on our backs to give us nothing, and then cordon us off, read the color, read the read the color of law, and cordon us off in ghetto, and put all the failure in our neighborhood. If we don't get some kind of redress for that, we're finished. This is life and death. This is not something you should play with. This is not something you can say, "Well, that I watch you and I watch her." No. And I don't want nobody coming to me. If we do it and we mess it up and we don't get it right and we don't decide that we're a tribe, don't come to me and say, Vet, you're right. I ain't speaking to you. I'm going to tell you to kick all the rocks. There's nothing to talk about after that. You're going to be going and having interviews with people who aren't even from here. And they're going to tell you. And, they gonna, and, and, then when, and then when they discriminate against you as a deal, they're going to say, well, you got fired by an Ethiopian. So... Is, I'm sure, like, you know, it's no discrimination. Y'all y'all are both people of color. Good luck. Good luck. And let me just say this. You know, let me just, let me just say something. You know, I just want to put this out here. I just, you know, I, I said a minute ago about all of her wikis, about all of the leaders and the, the leaders who were, who are actually um, um, immigrants and all of that um, in America. And I know she thought she was doing some bless her heart. But you have to understand something, that these people joined our politics. They came here and joined our politics and our ideology. You have to understand the reason Pan-Africanism was strong then, because you were having a lot of African nations that were being freed from colonialism and black people who were, who were who, like Malcolm X, who were doing things here. There was a moment, that's timing. I know you don't understand timing, Amanda Seals, but I'm here to teach you. That was a timing thing, right? So, so what happened was not only that the time changed, one of the things that happened is that we lost, as DOS, we lost control of the narrative. Why? Look at this number. Look at the explosion of black immigrants. Over time, look at that 1980, and watch it shoot up to 2016. Rose, from full, rose to 4.2 million in 2000, and it's more than that now. See, the thing is, we're being flooded. We're at the bottom. We're in the bottom 90 of this country. And we're being flooded with a bunch of other groups. And so we're losing control of the narrative because of the numbers. See, before when, when there were only when, when there were only a few immigrants who were streaming in, we controlled the direction of the conversation. There was also a moment cu countries in Africa getting their own sovereignty, but we were in control. Now what you have is this huge number of people who are coming in and they're winning and we're losing. I'm just trying to tell you like it is. You're not joining our politics and our, our struggle. And you want me to compete. It's different. Let me bring it up big for you. Hold on one second. Because I, I, you got to see this. Ooh. Okay, see this is overall 28% of immigrants, of black immigrants have college degree, but this varies widely through origin. So let's bring down the origin population, shall we? So you want me less than, tw about 20% of, in that range of DOS have degrees. You want me to compete against Nigerians who have 59% of them have degrees. Kenyans, 47. Ghana, 37. You want me to compete. See, let me tell you something, black people. 
Everybody except us knows if we try to compete, we lose. Everybody's here because they know the game is set against us. And nobody wants us to fight for us because they know if we start fighting for us, it's going to be a problem for them. So they all stream in. What is wrong with you? You know, you're being divisive. No, you're being divisive by coming over here claiming something other than other on all your applications. And you should fight over there. All these people suffering in your country, going through things in your country. Why you ain't fighting where you from? You know I lose on this framework. You know this is a losing game. That's why you keep playing for keeps. This is an awful, this is an awful piece of data in terms of what we're what we're demanding that we compete against. And then you have our own idiots saying, well, if you you just gotta be more like Nigerians. We don't have the history of them. We don't have the history of any of these groups. We don't live in a we 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 have been suffocated into a sort of oppression that that that, that you don't even know. I don't care if you were colonized, it was still a mostly black uh, nearly all black country. We have been subjugated and, su and zoned into the ghettos. Read a book. But you're gonna ask why you don't get to speak for me? Why don't you get to speak for DOS? Cause you mean well, cause you got melanin? What? And let me just say something else. When you talk about Malcolm X, she tried to bring, well, Malcolm X and all these other people who were born and, and from parents who had an immigrant parent or whatever. Malcolm X wasn't trying to get on no sitcom. So let me tell you something about yourself. You don't get to claim Malcolm X if you ain't Malcolm X. At this point, Malcolm X belongs to us. He don't even belong to nobody else no more. He belongs to us. But you don't get to claim him and be like, well, he was an immigrant like me. Child, you're trying to get on a, you're trying to get on, you're trying to get Issa Rae to put you back on for next season. Hush. You don't get to claim him. You got to be him to claim him. Now, if you out here in the street, I will hear, we got immigrant allies. We have, we have black immigrant allies who call in all the time. And you know the ones who tell me about you the most are the black immigrant allies who call in. They're very honest about, listen, you know I talk to these people all the time and they ain't nothing. They ain't right and they don't align and I be trying to help. They, they know. They know the inside game. When I talked about Nigeria, I said, I only want your low class. I only want the people who get mistreated by y'all. I want, you know who I want? I don't want Lovey. I want Lovey's maid. The dr I want Lovey's driver. If you want somebody to immigrate here, I want her driver. Because she knows, or he knows what it's like to be treated like garbage. And I have an end in terms of the politics I can do with him. I can't do no politics from you. You just like the white people. That's why we don't mesh. You understand? Have I, have I made it clear? See, you have to, let me just, I, I, you have to understand that a lot of these people are what's left over. Well, what do you mean, Yvette, what's left over? The people who were siding with us in terms of DOS, a lot of those people in Africa and elsewhere were slaughtered. We are not dealing with them. A lot of the people that we are dealing with, not all of them, like I said, we got black allies that call in here all the time and spill all the beans, and they good people. I get emails from them. But a lot of the people, and they will, they will agree, a lot of the people that we're dealing with are the people who got left over and decided, I'm not going to go the route of the true revolutionaries because the true revolutionaries got killed. Lumumba and all of them between 1961 and 1973, six African independent leaders were assassinated by their colonial rulers, including Patrice Lumumba of Congo, who was killed 50 years ago. Listen, a lot of these people have decided, I'm not going to be Patrice Lamar, but I'm not going to fight for no rights. I'm going to go along to get along. I'm going to be the best little super capitalist I can be. You are not my ally, though. You understand that makes you the opposite. That kind of makes you an enemy. We don't have an ideology and skin color ain't going to do it. That makes you an enemy. I'm sorry. It is what it is. And so... All of what I have done today, you know, what what I've tried to do is try to like, you know, Lovey said, well, Lovey, I Lovey said, well, you know, um, uh, Amanda Seals brought the receipts. No, Lovey, this is what receipts look like. Like, if you want to know what receipts look like, my dear, this is what receipts look like. Your girl did a one minute blurb and it was just garbage, but this is what receipts actually look like, and I'm happy to show you because I understand you need some help. I understand that you really do. You really, really do. You know, there's a, um, I'm reading from something. Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago announces free university education for all. 
but at what cost to the private and foreign providers? The Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Patrick Manning, um, recently announced his in his 2005 national budget that as 1 January 2006, access to public uh, tertiary institution will be free of charge. See, these people never tell you about the free stuff they get and, like, the affirmative action they get. And you can't go there and get their affirmative action. You can't go there and get their free stuff. But they get to come here and get ours. By what right, black people? By my DOS family, by what right? They make school free, and then you get to come here and be a doctor? So wait, they make school free for you, and you get to come here and be a doctor and compete against DOS doctors who have six figures worth of debt? By what right? No, 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 this is a problem. This is a, this is a problem. No, I'm not with it. It's, and it's not okay. And let me just, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a, a, ahead of time. I'm getting low on time, but, you know, it's time to choose. And one of the things that I will, as I, as I end, I want, if you all have not, um, there was an article by Antonio Moore, um, in in your web but let me just read this let me just read this because it kind of it kind of brings home where we are and and, and it also kind of brings home what needs to happen and just google antonio more your web it says yet despite all of this recent immigrants from the continent of africa are striving to create what amounts to a solidarity of sameness with american dos one built largely around the narrative which encourages all blacks to view the continent of Africa as sort of a unified country and the United States of America as merely a transient one. They envision a broad solidarity built on an identitarian oneness that by its very nature undermines the unique claim of reparations being owed to American DOS as a result of particular injustice they have borne since arriving in the country. Furthermore, this imagined coalition complicates the issue of who should even have a right to speak as a representative of American DOS on repairing what was wrought upon the black American families. Essentially, the solidarity is the painting of a f fantastical unified Africa that fought to get American DOS back since the day the, f uh, the, day the first among them were stolen in 1619. It is truly a version of history in which Wakanda and Zamunda might well exist. In effect, this solidarity through African Americanness has become a one-way door that admits everyone with melanin and African origin and allows them to the ability to integrate, at least superficially, into the culturally embedded position that American DOS have traditionally exclusively occupied in the United States, while giving no specialized access to African country for American DOS. This is what it is. This is what it is. I'm sorry if people are haunted by it or made upset by it. You know, it but the truth is the truth. The truth just is the truth. And I don't I that's, that's all I can say about it. And what I want to end on, listen, what we don't understand is that there is a whole infrastructure being created to box us out. Well, what are you saying, Yvette? Well, what I'm saying is that when you look at somebody says, this was on the shade room, this little stupid little rant was on the shade room, right? And so somebody said, well, Yvette, you know, why, why, you know, you, you, you do numbers. Why haven't you been on the, you've been on the shade room? Well, I think it's clear. I think it's very clear why I haven't been on the shade room. And, and it's clear, like the shade room is, is ran by a, a Nigerian uh, immigrant. And I mean, her parents were immigrants. And she ended up in foster care because I think her daddy murdered her mama. But she still identified, even, even after basically being thrown away because her father destroyed the family. She still identified as Nigerian. And one of the things that's so amazing about the whole story it says that the other part, and this is from the article I just put up, is because she's Nigerian, Nigerians are some of the most successful immigrants in America, she said. And so when I would go to class, people would say, oh, you're Nigerian. So they would expect 
me to be smart. Somebody expected something of me. Like, like she got the benefit of a positive stereotype. And we don't, we get the, we get the benefit of, we get, you're lazy and all that stuff. And it's funny that even though they, even though, even given the tragedy of her family, she never came out of that and just said, I'm American. She still identified as Nigerian. Like these people are still anchored in something that washes them free of being us. And then you have to understand, and then they want to be us. Look at this. This is a quote also from the article. She says a few times during our conversation, and she's talking about, you know, you know, um, this is the author talking about um, the head of um, the shade room. No wonder lead it to, to her. No, no one do lead it alluded to her Nigerian heritage as an excuse for the shade room's occasional missteps. We said Mammy in one post, she said. Readers, readers killed us for that. They were like, did you know that Mammy was what they call the slaves and we were like oh my god so that is everybody around you nigerian are, are all the people you hired nigerian and nobody knew that okay mm, okay i'm definitely getting an education because i'm nigerian and i'm still learning what's acceptable and not acceptable i have to be educated on the types on those types of things we posted something on beyonce and she had a cartoon character on her shirt that represented an old restaurant called coons that got shut down because it was so racist and i was like how was i supposed to know that this character was from that i had no clue because people were like why would you do this and support that so i definitely have to educate myself and i'm happy because i need to be educated i want y'all let that sink in real quick Understand that one of the most popular outlets online for DOS people is, is, is being led by somebody who is having to learn what it means to be a DOS person on the fly. See, the times are too serious right now in terms of what we have to do, understand, navigate, and this terrain for you to be trying to learn on the fly. You don't even understand who we are in our culture. Why are you leading our culture and see that boxes me out. I already talked about I, I graduated, graduated from Howard University but Howard University now in the top tier is led by a group of black immigrants I probably couldn't even go and speak at Howard University right now because of the black immigrants at the top tier I can't go to the shade room and 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 have my voice heard because they're black immigrants they don't agree. this is a boxing out of DOS and we don't even see it coming let me tell you y'all can play that game all day you can play that pan-africanism game all day but let me tell you what's going to happen. We need a group. We need a tribe. If we can't do that, we are finished. We can play that, but you will die playing this pan-Africanism. We all brown, black game. You will die doing it. It'll just be finished. We'll just be over. Just understand that. Oh, you're smart. When somebody says, oh, you're smart to a Nigerian, they're saying, understand the juxtaposition is that you're smart you're not like these dos people you're smart you're different and understand how they advantage that and how they navigate the american white supremacist system with that in mind we the pawns there's a whole chess game being played and on both sides we the pawn so the, the sooner you understand that the better off you'll be and the better off you'll be and understanding that people don't consider us smart but you're nigerian you're smart these other little native black you know these other little dos american they but you smart understand what that means for us you have to understand this and you have to play the game people love to talk about power and all this kind of stuff you, you don't but you don't know how to wield it you don't know how to do it you don't know how to manage it that's obvious so you know the pawn's gonna get it you know we have a we have a chance right now we have a very small moment fam we have a moment we have a moment to take this back this is it after this is over you're gonna have indians at the head of google you're gonna have everybody it's gonna be everybody else running stuff and everybody what are all people of color and we're gonna be nowhere even on the bottom the mexicans are doing that stuff so we're gonna be nowhere this is it. Either you do it now and you claim your legacy and your lineage in this country or it is over. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. I'm not trying to exaggerate anything. I look at the data all the time and there is no way out other than us claiming what is legitimately ours. We can't survive like this. I, 
like I don't think I don't I don't think people understand that. You know, housing housing concerns at Clark Atlanta University. People ain't got the money for Clark. That is what it is. So fam, I'm gonna take a quick break. Um get the phone set up. And I will be back, and I want to hear what you got to say. I went a little bit long, but I'll be back. I want to hear your side, and, and we're going to have a conversation. I just checked the email, and I didn't see anything from anybody just yet. Um, I'm, just, I'm just saying, because everybody everybody want to talk. Everybody say, well, I can't ever get through. I don't, editor at BreakingBrown.com. All right? Appreciate you.
on, fam? About to go to the calls and see what y'all got to say about what's going on. Um, yeah. So, <coughs> the chat is inter interesting. Um, but I'm going to go to 443. 443, what is your name? Where you calling from? And uh, what's on your mind? Hold on. Uh oh. 443, you there? Hello? Hey. Hello? Yeah, what's going on? How you doing? Pretty good. What's going on with you? I'm good, man. My name is Omar. You know, born and raised in New York City. Ended up going to law school. My parents are from Guatemala. Uh -huh. And so, I saw a lot of this stuff within my own extended family. And especially when I went to law school, a lot of this down-talking, condescending attitude towards mm. African-Americans. Mm. You see, me, I feel as though, hey, my parents migrated to this country. Mm -hmm. In terms of my pyramid, in terms of who I owe, in terms of who I should align with, it's African-Americans. Of course. Because they migrated here. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they want to stay in Guatemala, then <laughs> my, my, my allegiance would be different. But they didn't stay there. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that's something that a lot of black immigrants don't want to accept and don't want to understand. But uh, at the same time, Lovey represents what I think is a a triple, a, a triangle of what is modern black college educated thought, which is pan-Africanism combined with intersectionality coupled with classism. Hmm. And these folks have combined all these things, and it's blatant in the media, in terms of the academics that they follow and prop uh -huh. up, in terms of the TV shows that they follow and prop up, and the black online magazines that they follow and prop up. Uh -huh. I, I, I take it to consideration. Um, Zona Hurston has been a big figure, especially among black uh, um, African-American women um, academics for years now. But since Barrett Cohn came out, I'm friends with some of my professors from from my undergrad. They have not mentioned Barrett Cohn. Why? Mm. Because unlike Hurston's other other works, this touches on a, on a touchy subject. It undermines Pan Africanism because it showcases that Africans sold black folks into into slavery, and it did that. On a, it, Hurston does that on a blatant level, and they're uncomfortable with that. Mm. I haven't seen a single post from any of my professors on Barracoon. No, nothing. They look at when they call folks on Twitter dusty hoteps. That's coded language. What is it, co what language. Is it coded language for? It, it's coded language for a poor black African American man. Oh, That's wow. what it's coded language for. When they start talking about ashy hoteps, and they basically saying you can't afford lotion, you can't afford shea butter, you can't afford, you can't afford to be on my level. You can't afford to go to brunch. You can't afford the mimosa. You can't afford the mimosa at happy hour. All right. And then another thing that I've had to deal with in my own family, uh -huh. and I've had to check. I had to check my cousin a couple of days ago. We had a discussion. Because black Guatemalans are stuck. Right now, they're economically stuck. We are concentrated in the South Bronx and scattered throughout Brooklyn. And one of the things that he attempted to do was attempt to blame African-American culture for black Guatemalans being stuck. Black Guatemalans have been in the United States for about 50 years. Uh -huh. We don't even have, we can't even name a black Guatemalan doctor. Like, we, we, it's been a stagnant situation. And so he, he, like many other black immigrants, attempted to blame American culture, uh, African-American culture, poor African-American culture. Mm. They call it becoming Americanizado. Um, um, Caribbean call it be, um, acting like a Yankee, you know. And it's, it, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. And I told him, you need... I have no proof that black Guatemalan culture has strong pillars before they came into interaction 
was poor African American culture. Uh huh. From what I from what I know, Black Guatemalan culture was already jacked up before they even got here. <laughs> what you trying to you trying to use African American culture as a cop out? And Jamaicans do the same thing. Jamaicans do the same thing in, in, in Brooklyn. West Africans, you look at all the major drug dealers from New York City in the 1980s. vast majority of them were, were, were Caribbean. vast majority of them were not African American. They were Caribbean. Most of the crime in Brooklyn is committed by Caribbean folks. But yet, when they, what do their parents, one of the things their parents say is, you're acting like the Yankees. You're acting like the Yankees. You, you, you're not being a hard-working Jamaican. But no. This person has been here several decades. They've been messed up for years. You're blaming mm. African-American culture for something that probably has roots in Jamaica. Mm. But you just cut up. I, I appreciate you, fam. I pre- I, listen, I... The people who always spill the beans are like are like are like allies. Allies always have all the goods and all the juice and all the stuff to tell. And I appreciate you coming in here telling all the goods, fam. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I, listen, somebody somebody pointed out to me that somebody pointed out to Amanda Seals that 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 we was taking her to task and 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 here's what she said, child. Oh, these people are so vacuous, honey. I can't deal with the level of vacuousness. Understand that that right there, you see that little flag? That's a Granada flag. Now, how do you have a Granada? Ain't no American flag there. Understand on her Twitter account, there's a Granada flag. Ain't no American flag there. First of all, understand that. Understand that you have angered yourself in that. Then you're going to be like, how come I don't get to speak for you, girl? Go on. And then you're going to say, well, heavy is the crown. What crown, child? you just a long in the tooth woman who's trying to be an actress who is it's about finished. You might want to just do something else at this point. Like, there is no crown. This is some elitist stuff. Like, you are anchored in elitism to say heavy is the crown. How many times y'all ever seen me say, well, heavy is the crown? I ain't got no crown. And I'm not looking for a crown. I operate in the realm of the people. That's what I do. Ain't no crown. Honey, stop. Just embarrassing yourself on the Twitter like that. Just embarrassing yourself on the Twitter, child. Oh. Oh, you got you got, uh, got a Granada flag on Twitter and then her name, she she child, you are outsider, honey. And I don't know why you don't understand that you're an outsider. You should at least switch that up when you knew I was coming for you, but you you not you can't do that, can you? You you're not swifty enough for that, are you? Child, stop. I'm going to go to um, 919. 919, what is your name? Where are you calling from? What's on your mind? Hello, Yvette. This is Indiana from North Carolina. Hey, what's going on? Hi. So, I, I want to start by saying, like, over the decades of my life, interacting with other Africans and foreign blacks, I've come to understand that their attitude and relationship to us is paternalistic and condescending. Mm. Like, um, they're, they're constantly asserting themselves, like their nationality and ethnicity is weapons against us. Um, like they talk about how their language, their music, their food, all that is culture, you know, and get sensitive, you know, when we say something and we don't understand or ask questions. However, you know, they call us lost, cultureless mutts who lack respect and tradition. But then when it comes to the, the slick stuff that Lovey said about Tevin Campbell to Aretha, it's like, okay, do you not understand the disconnect that in black American music history, Tevin and Aretha have a strong relationship. Therefore, you know, when he's grieving in black American culture, you show respect to a family or someone who's close to someone who's passed. Yeah. You know, you don't just run your mouth, talk slick like that. That's just something you don't do in black American culture. And um, it's like if yep. you're identifying as black American, and you want to be anchored in an Afro-Indigenous struggle, tell me, which of your ancestors were martyrs and died for your humanity during the Civil Rights Movement, not even during slavery? Yeah, I no, I agree. And, and, and we have to tie in that word Akata. When you talked about that, that is Akata. Like, that's how, they, that's how they think of us, right? 
That is... When right, they, and see, yep. they I like to brush it off as, no, a kind of just means foreign. No, it's a racial slur, and when we call y'all foreign, your feelings are hurt. Yep. You know, you're like, you can't dish something out that you can't take. Yeah, that's not something but you, but that it's not, it's not, it's, as black Americans. It's, it's, it's worse than that, though, fam. Like you're in my country, though. Like I would never go to, like I would right. never go to somebody else's country and disrespect them. Like when I go to somebody else's country, I am so deferential because this is yours. This is your space. You want to come here? Like I, like y'all got to go back and if it's still up and revisit that grapevine conversation where the African American, the the DOS woman was talking. And they were like, "This is not your country. This is a transient country." Like who 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 you should you should you should like like we should just go and like you do you understand how awful and disrespectful this is not even like a country where like okay a bunch of people moved here at the same time. We built this country and you're telling me this isn't my country? Like I couldn't have been there because right. we have been That's wrestling. Thing, like like I can't this is a transient country. Yep. Saying this is a transient country really just it's and calling us lost, color, cultural as much, like that's, that's intentionally using bigoted rhetoric to undermine and dismiss us. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, it's, um, what I want to say is like when we speak of, especially on Twitter, when we speak of blackness, it's kind of like this tacit understanding that it's the default is initially the focus is black Americans, which isn't just simply being black in America. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it was, then they wouldn't, you know, pump their chest out and distinguish themselves from us. Yeah. But they constantly do. Yeah. And I watched the Rachel Dolezal documentary a while back, uh -huh. and a quote that she said stuck out to me, it was very profound. She was like, who's the gatekeeper of blackness? Who can protect it, define it, and own it? How you feel is more powerful than how you were born. And then um, Amanda, during her, her Instagram rant, she's like, tell me the formula. And it's like, okay, well, I have, you know, something for the both of you. Who's the gatekeeper of blackness? And... Who can protect it, define it, and own it in the sense of black Americanness? Us, Afro-Indigenous, yeah. descendants of slaves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you you define your Africanness and all your tribes and all your countries. You always, like, they always want to tell us who we are not. However, when we push back and say, okay, this is who I am, they want to tell us we're wrong. You know, like you said in the previous show, I think it was Monday, it's like, our lineage isn't like a trans identity. It's not like something that, it's not an intangible, like our blackness, our lineage isn't some intangible feeling. No. It's a historical and cultural context that you well cannot take away from us. Well documented. And let me just, well let, me just add, yes. let me just add one other thing, fam. These are the people, like you, what you really have here, to a large extent, you have people who sold us into slavery and what that did to us now calling us a cotta. So you sold me into something that damaged me and on a lot of levels destroyed me. And then when, when I, when I, when I show you that damage, you say, Oh, well, you're just a wild animal, but well, you're a horrible person. You are horrible. Like y'all were horrible. Per <laughs> to be in the flesh trade, you were a horrible person. Because what it said, what that Henry Louis Gates article says, like that, 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 like that, white people tapped into a trade that already existed. So, so you were already horrible people, and that's part of why your, 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 your whole. That's part of why West Africa has collapsed. Is because when slavery was over, y'all wasn't doing nothing else. Y'all were just selling, all you selling, selling people in your country. So y'all had to, what you going You can't make a whole life out of palm oil, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. At least not in what I, in the context in, of what I understand about being American in a capitalist society. Exactly. No, exactly. Thank you, fam. I want to thank you for calling in. I thank appreciate you. that it was it was it, it, it was it was interesting. That's that's what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. And I think what we have to do. Also, hold on one second. Let me get this off before I get to the next call. I think what we have to do is, is kind of understand that. I think we have to understand what the, the economy means, wild animal. Like somebody who considers themselves your family doesn't make up a word called wild animal to, to, <laughs> to talk about you. Like you are not my family if you consider me a wild animal. That's not who you are. 
this is anchor culture like she's anchored like when i put up that image like of of, of her she's anchored in like in like Granada, like don't call, like you see the flag, like don't call me. You don't even have like an American flag and a, and a Granada. You don't have two flags that represent both of your parents. Get out of here. You don't get to represent me and speak for me. So when you ask who who gets to speak for us, not you. So I'm going to two four zero two four zero. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? How you doing tonight, Sister Yvette? I'm doing all right. How about you? Yeah. This is I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm a little bit fired up. This is Ron from the DMV. Hey, Ron. Since I called in, I'm not gonna stay long. Okay. Because I wanted to just point out a couple of points. Okay. Um, in the 2015 uh, PBS special, you had Skip Gates on that discovered that Ben Affleck's ancestors were slave owners. Uh -huh. And that man, Ben Affleck, even he was so embarrassed, he begged for him to not put that information out there on the show. That's true. Because he couldn't handle it. And mm -hmm. you have people that are sitting here bragging on, and writing articles about it. That's just pure disrespect. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm thinking of everything that you're saying, and I'm thinking, you know, we have to immerse ourselves in broadcasts like yours because that's where you get information. It's not in the public school system. Mm. I know because that's where I work. It's not in the <laughs> school system. You have to be able to give a counter narrative to what's being taught. And, and this whole thing reminds me of the 1956 movie Invasion of the Body Snatches where you had people that were being replaced by other things that came there and were taking over and they looked like the person but they didn't have any of the emotional attachments as the person in history that the original people had mm. so i decided to call people like like uh this woman that you put on uh twitter because i didn't know anything about her till this no, morning I, didn't even... I call her a body snatcher <laughs> she's a body snatcher she has no emotional attachment or knowledge or feeling for what the we, the Native Black American DOS, have to deal with. Uh, and last point I wanted to make, I wanted to ask you, did you see um, the Ugandan video of, of, it was a lobby, and it was a, a, a white man who was a, um, he was a missionary that had come down, and he was just cursing out the man behind the staff. He jumped over the counter. I think I did. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. He was he was acting a monk. Yeah, he was acting up. Yeah, I, I think I did see that. <laughs> they even had security that wouldn't stop that man from swinging and trending. The guy sitting there and acting like he didn't know what to do. And people are like, oh, well, he was arrested. Well, what makes me upset and frustrated when you're a native black DOS and you're fighting the struggle and you got other native black DOS people fighting with you rather than saying, okay, well, and, and I'm looking at the commentary and I'm saying, okay, on social media, for the most part, native black people were saying the same thing. Oh, he would have got been a grease spot. So he, somebody would have had to wipe that man up off the floor. And I asked, well, why is it that the African people in Uganda uh, have this such um, passive role mm. in, in, in dealing with them. But when it comes to us, we hear a kata. We hear all this negativity. Mm. Not necessarily just from Uganda. I'm saying, why is it aggressiveness? And they're like, oh, we're peace-loving people. No, you're not when it comes to us. <laughs> when it comes to us, you're, we're powerless. So which way is it? It's like, it's either fact or it's, it's not. And, and, I mean, we do have, like Omar did call earlier, we do have allies, but we need to spot who our allies are early. Yep. And we need to deal with them at that point. Yep. And we and we and we need to and we need to do a people yep. call in that are uh, uh, listening to that other chick. I, she was she sounded to me like she really lost her mind. And sometimes, unfortunately for us, people will follow. That people got to stop being lemmings. You got to follow people that make sense okay. rather than follow people because they popular on some TV show. Uh -oh. That's all I wanted to say. Uh oh, I don't even think she popular. Thank you, friend. I, I Thank you, fam. I appreciate it. I don't even think she popular, child. What was she like? A Dubois character? Like, child, hold on. You ain't. I don't even think you popular, honey. I don't even think you popular. You probably got on there because you did that almost for free, child. I don't even. You didn't get paid for that because Issa Rae ain't getting paid no real money. If you want to, if you want to, if you quiet as it's kept, honey. 
So I, I, I don't even think you got paid no real money for that. You're just coming for your friends because love is supposed to have a show and all kind of things supposed to happen and you want to be included. Go on. And you are uh, and you are anchored in, in Granada. So I don't even I can't even find Granada on a map. But and no offense to my Grenadian fan, but I'm just saying I can't. So I don't even know what she doing. So um eight three two, eight three two, I'm coming to you. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, how you doing, Breaking Rock family? This is Linda James, and I am calling. I'm a student from Prairie View A&M University. Oh, what's going on, fam? Not much. I'm calling. Uh, I'm sorry, I still haven't sent you the email about uh, the event. I've been tied up with this internship that I'm doing, but my last day is tomorrow. I'll be getting. I'll, I'll definitely get back to you. I have no idea what topics we might discuss, so hopefully people okay. will link up with me. Okay. Uh, Omar, I think he called in, I'm not sure, but he reached out to me. He's from Houston, Texas also. Okay. He's one of the people that emailed me. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna get back to uh I'm gonna get back to the topic. Uh all right, uh I, I recently went for a conference and, you know, had the discussion, you know, about uh you know, the difference between black people and Africans and uh what what our role really is as far as us coming here to America and uh what, one, of, one of the things, you know, the, the common the, the common argument that people bring up all the time and what this guy kind of presented to me was, uh, man, black people just need to, black Americans, they're just, they're just lazy. They don't send their kids to college. Uh, they don't pay for the kids to come to co go to college. They just give birth to kids and then not able to take care of them. No and money I, for that. No money. I countered that. <laughs> And I, I kind of countered that. I'm just like, okay, if that's actually how you believe, then why is it that you came to America to, and attended Texas A&M University, study petroleum engineer, but you didn't study it back home in Lagos, Nigeria? And uh, he kind of got riled up, and uh, kind of I, I kind of walked away from it because first of all, we were in Oklahoma. I didn't know much about the history of Oklahoma. And what they done to us, but uh, when I uh, well, you know, the, the, the people that I ally with, Black mm -hmm. Americans, and um, I, I kind of didn't know the history behind it. But anyway, we were doing that all in the crowd of a restaurant, and it was just I had to walk away from that. Uh, yeah, you gotta be smart. It, it just, you gotta be smart. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and it was just like I, I just stated that question right there, and it kind of riled him up, and and that's the only thing that normally people just come up with, and I'm just like. You keep talking like this. I'm confused. Like for somebody like me, I can easily talk like that because I have I have I have family members who have streets named after them in my own country and things like that. I can easily brag about those things, but I, I I know my history and I also know the history of Black Americans here, and I I know that there's a big difference. So I don't downplay it and things like that. But um, anyway, I just thought I'd bring up that topic. No, I I, uh, I appreciate it. And I think one of the things we have to understand, fam, and I say I appreciate it, but I think one of the things that you're pointing uh, to is that, listen, we cannot, as DOS people, I can't be on here fighting white people and white supremacy and fighting you and everything that you don't understand. I can only fight one thing, and that's the big thing. So if you're not the big thing, you got to go. If you're not here to help me and I got to fight you and fight that, then you're going to have to stay wherever you at. Go fight corruption in Nigeria and do whatever you do with Ghana or wherever or, or Grenada or wherever. I can't fight everything. I can't do everything. We're 14 percent of the population. I can't be fighting you on one side and I got to fight them on the other. No, you just might have to stay home. Now, and, then, and then what no, What they're going to counter you with is, uh, well, why, why do you keep having babies? I mean, like, what do you like, mean? You like, but, but they don't. Dad, but they don't know? have any. But they don't have any data. The birth rate among Black American women has gone down. Like, it's not that. It, the problem is that we have built this country with free labor, and we don't even have enough money to have children. But you don't care because you're a scavenger. Scavengers don't care, and you don't care because you don't know because your your parents have money to skim send for your school fees. You don't know that our parents work and still don't have the money, full time jobs, and still don't have the money those who are lucky enough to get them and there's not enough money to pay for school you don't know enough to be here see that's the problem i run against too you don't know enough to be here and if you don't know enough to be here you're gonna have to stay home because you don't know enough to be an ally it's, it's crazy and this, this is my last thing i'm sorry the the, the other thing they the, the, the table you know once again this is an organization
Association, the National Society of Black Engineers, uh, majority of the table, except for, I think, two people that were DOSs, uh, the majority of the table was just on his side. And it was just, it, it, it including, including the DOSs. And I was just like, wow, this is, this is something else. But anyway, I just thought I'd leave that with yeah, you. Yeah. And um, you have a... You I, have appreciate a it. I appreciate it, fam. I appreciate it, fam. Oh, okay, what? One more thing. I'm so sorry. That's what I forgot to bring up. Uh, I, I had listened to uh, this one podcast where Charlamagne got it, which is also a friend of uh, what's this girl's name that we're talking about tonight. Uh, of course he is. is. Uh, he, she, yeah, she's a, he's a friend of her. Mr. Black to Privilege. Podcast where action, huh? I said Mr. Black Privilege. Of course he is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she... Um, I'm listening to the podcast, and he has a he has a white guy on there who's actually like a co-host on that podcast. He actually knows that there's a difference between black Americans and then Sierra Leoneans, Nigerians, and everything. And then see the God every time they bring that up, he always breaks it down with, "Well, we're just all black people." I, I don't know, I don't know why we have to go into all that. But it's funny that this is a white guy that is that is explaining this to this podcast's uh, crowd, but. Charlemagne, the guy, kind of backs it and says, well, no, 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 we're all black anyway, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, I just thought I'd just lay that to you. And yeah, you have a good night. <laughs> Thank you, fam. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I really do. I appreciate it. But see, the thing is, the, the most damaging thing that he said is like, when you, have, when you have us in a room, right? You have us in a room and we don't even defend it. And part of that has to do with, like, we got to start doing work, people. I'm sorry. Like, we got to start reading what we need to read and do what we need to do. You know, um, we, 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 you know, see, if, see the, the reason we fall for stupid stuff is because we don't understand we don't understand that like who we are and what we did and we don't brag about it like we should be bragging about this listen we made a space for you to be here like you can leave and and it'll be all right and the world won't miss you i won't miss you like we can do that but we won't do that see because we don't if you access the color of law when somebody says something stupid to you you just smack them upside the head and i'm not talking about physically i'm talking about like intellectually you could just hit them like boom like you 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 moron you could just hit them but since we don't know we just sit at a table with them and be like well i don't know i guess maybe you know they might have a point you know we just we just we just don't be doing enough shuffle 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 no that's not good enough that's not that's not that no like we no, you don't understand our history in this country and so you can't when you don't understand our history in this country you can't defend our history in this country and that becomes a that becomes a really big problem. That becomes a really big problem in terms of, you know, who we are. Lord, the child still talking. She having some problems. She having some problems with the Breaking Brown family. Um, I'm going to go to the next call. I'm going to five one zero five one zero. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hello, five one zero. Can you hear me? Five one zero. All right, I don't think five one zero can hear me. Um, I'm going to three four seven three four seven. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hello. Hey, what's going on? Hey, is the is Jenny from Brooklyn? What's going on? What's girl? going on? I ain't heard from you in a minute. <laughs> girl, I was on the car jam. Go home and take care of the business and come back. Ah, okay, Christ, got Get to that good night, my girl. <laughs> So what's going on? The people that us. Girl, let me tell you something. You see, you see all I've been saying on the show about what we do here, we come to this country. Uh -huh. Our job is to make it easier for everybody else to come. As you can see, this girl here has her grade in flag up and she's aligning herself with other immigrants. <laughs> Even though it's America, she come and get her opportunity because that's the green didn't have nothing to give nobody. You understand me? Okay. But she's not gonna align herself with nobody else by the immigrants. And let me tell you something too. You see why immigrants have the image of black American that they have? It's because of us. Mm. You see, when we go back home, we build a mansion in the sky. 
because the U.S. dollar is so heavy Ooh. in other countries. U.S. dollar, you other say? Countries. U.S. dollar. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me tell you something. You see, you see your one U.S. dollar is uh -huh. 134 Jamaican dollars. You what? Know what she said one U.S. dollar, 134 Jamaican dollars. That's the value of having a homeland. Go on and tell the truth and change the devil. Girl, I, I mean, I love it because the can't go, man, take care of my business. But can we can't take a little bit of money and build up a mansion. So when the locals are watching you come back home, they say, well, wait a minute. Fun of the money because all oh, you damn America and I'm here struggling and I have a little box I'm building for 10, 15 years. I just put a second level on the house. And you come back and just build three, four, five levels, 13 bedrooms, 16 bathrooms, how much acreage? How can you do that? And then even I said, well, you know, in America, and this, well, we're not telling them in America how hard we have to work. Yeah. We're not telling them in America the struggle. Yeah. We're not telling them enough of us can't afford house in America. So we all bunching up, renting a room here, renting mm. a room here, working and saving the money to build a mansion in the sky. We're not telling them that we have to build a mansion in the sky because guess what? We can't afford to retire in America. Oh. America is getting so expensive. Who's going to afford to retire here? So we're not telling the full story. And we don't have a homeland to go to. We can't afford. DOS can't afford to retire here either. We ain't got nowhere to go. And that's the rough part. Because I said to myself, boy, it's rough. Black Americans have a double edge. Because when America gets on my nerves, we can't book a plane ticket and say, hey, I'm home. What's happening? You don't have no way for me to move. You're just here. You don't have an outlet. You don't have no way to run. It's not, it's not easy. When you can't run from where you come from. People always want to pick up and move and go here and go there. Okay, fine. You're always going to have those people. But what about those who can't afford to run? What about those who are forced to stay? You're coming here and you're reaping off the land. You don't feel any responsibility to help the cause. That's what I'm saying, fam. But well, And listen to this too, family. Like, when you go back to Jamaica, like... I don't think I don't I, I would be really interested to hear your opinion because America is so consumer based. Like I can't turn on my iPhone without somebody trying to convince me to buy something. Oh, you like them jeans that you bought a year ago? I got some new jeans for you and they fit better. Like everything when I turn on my computer, I don't think people understand what it means to go to a place that is less like that is less like just buy all the time. And like you can have a little piece away from that. Like, people don't understand how hyper-capital America is unless you go away from America. Yeah, they don't have no clue. Because even back home when I'm talking to them, I'm telling them how rough it is here. They're saying to me, well, if you buy a house in America, it's your house. I said, no. Because guess what? If you can't pay your tax, the government take your house. Yep. Jamaica's not like that. If you buy your house, it's your house. If you're going to do some problems, they have a law. The bank can't just take your house like that. Mm. The house is still your house. Mm. And he said to me, are you serious? I said, I'm telling you. I said, America's as easy as you make it sound. America's a place you have to constantly consume. As you buy the phone today, it broke tomorrow. Yep. I saw that back on the next phone. Yep. You can't say you're not buying a phone because everything is on the phone. The e email, this, that, even school now is online. Everything I can't find my way nowhere. Without, without Google Maps, I can't find my way nowhere. I'll be, I might, well, I'll be driving in circles without it. I can't do, I can't find my way nowhere. You can't, and you can't do it. Like you said, no, you can't do nothing without it. Yes, whoop, whoop. You can't, they don't understand. I'm telling them, even when I'm back home, I'm telling them, why are you watching the TV? 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 Why are you what they have, and I'm telling them, I see you just to understand, your house is paid for. You have a helper that coming in cooking clean three times a week. You know how much that is? You know how Ooh. lucky you are? Yeah. You don't work two jobs. When you tell you work two jobs, they said to you, how can you work two jobs? Is that possible? They say, yes, yeah, come to America anytime you're ready. I work. you like, <laughs> don't. I say you work. They don't. There's no concept because Jamaica does not run that way. It, it don't run that way. They, they're clueless. And it's our fault. When we go home, a lot of us don't talk the full story. They make yeah. it sound like everything is nice and hey, and the money and the ray, and I've been my match in the sky. But that's our retirement. That's our backup plan. Because we see it coming. We see the coming. So we got to get in you know, and line up our stuff. We have to line up with get what we have to get and run and go back home. And that's see, we don't, and see, we don't have it. 
and we don't have a, and we gonna have a, we don't, you know, they build, you know, into jobs and all kind. I mean, they, you know, we don't have a backup plan. You know, they, they you know, they build into job. You know, had, you know, you'll be able to find places, and you know, you don't like we don't have that. Like, I don't think we understand how much we're boxed in as Americans because we don't have nowhere to go, and this is our country, and we don't like everything is everything is so expensive expensive here and the wages are at the bottom and people be like well why can't you afford xyz because the wages are in garbage like labor is getting a smaller share of a, a so much smaller share How, income inequality means that labor is getting near to nothing right now in terms of what it used to get so what are you talking about why can't you afford xyz that means you just don't understand america they don't they have no clue just like other africans come here and they they can't go to school in that year and get educated. But guess what? They come here and their family will pay for them to go to school here. Because guess what now? When you go back to Nigeria, I'm an American trained doctor. You have alkali. You can't get anything where you want. Mm. People that respect you more all because you're trained in America. That's all you need to know. That's why a lot of them come here and train. Even though they can go to school back there, they come here and train and go back there so they can show up for the people that look up, oh, I trained in London, I trained in America, I trained here. I tra That's all a big scam and a big con. Uh, yeah, and, and build up, and build up, <laughs> and if you was really about your business, thank you, fam, I appreciate you calling in. Hadn't heard from you in a while, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm gonna try to get there. I uh, appreciate. You. I'm trying to get through a couple more calls. But if you wasn't really about your business, you would build up. You would build up your stuff. I mean, how y'all talk about the Wakandanization of something, and y'all coming over here bragging about? I was trained in America. I was trained in London. Build up your own institutions in your own country. That's really what Wakanda is, ain't it? Like y'all want to talk about? Like, come on, stop exalting all this stuff, man. Come on. I'm gonna go to um um. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh nine one seven nine one seven. What is your name? Where are you calling from and what's on your mind? <clears throat> Hi Yvette, this is Adelaide from Brooklyn. Hey Um, thank you for taking my call. Mm, no problem. So I'm calling to speak on two things. Mm -hmm. The first of which is sort of this recipe of very deep arrogance, um, a jealousy of the hyper visibility of African American GOF culture and this natural opportunism to come here and make a score. Oh. So going back to Lovey specifically, I want to point out a couple more of her tweets that show this depth of arrogance. Okay. I'm not dwelling on her as a person, but this idea, this pattern that we see in terms of the attitude that they, that some of them, because it's not all, but some of them carry yeah, over here. So these are tweets from a couple of years ago where she says, I ain't gonna lie, so speaking in African American vernacular, I ain't gonna lie, I will not be encouraging my kids to go to an HBCU. It's the African elitist in me. Unquote. Now, to be perfectly honest, I would love for HBCUs to prioritize DOF. Um, however, that being said, what's coming through in this tweet is that she is looking down upon our institutions because she's an African elitist. Next tweet. Ellen Mayo, laughing my ass off. My sister just asked me, did Al Sharpton invent Kwanzaa in 1984? Child, the shade she just threw. Next tweet. Uh, why do you frown at Kwanzaa? I don't know. I guess I'm an elitist African. Next tweet. Just because you celebrate Kwanzaa don't mean we're going to claim you, especially not looking like Quinta's mama. Next tweet. I should leave Kwanzaa alone like Africans do. Oh, yes, I did say that. Oh, yes, girl. Next tweet. Kwanzaa, the Millie the Millie of Holidays. This is actually an article that she wrote for Very Smart Brothers. Um, and then as recently as 2013, her complaining and saying black folks are so touchy about Black History Month and Kwanzaa. And this is in, in addition to several other tweets that she made about slave cries and just minimizing the horrors of American chattel slavery and either mocking it or turning it into something that's a joke. And so my question is, how do you have the sheer unmitigated gall to criticize us? And I know that a lot of us DOS people have varying opinions on Kwanzaa, which is fine. We're entitled to yeah. those opinions. We, we're here. This is our country. Who is not our tribe. Yeah. How do you, as someone who is not our tribe, come here and have the gall to criticize us for creating something to replace what was stolen from us? Like, you sold your child, basically, or your brother, and then you're mocking that child for many, many years later, not knowing the full family tree and not knowing the traditions. How do you have a hand 
in this disconnect and then mock us for that disconnect. That's absolutely shameful. Yeah, and it means so you're, but it means you're a horrible person. It means you're a horrible person, and your group, like right. in large, not everybody. The ones on the bottom probably wouldn't speak that way because they've of experienced course. it. Of course. Y'all are it horrible. Like you're horrible, it's and they're telling me like one. Lovey's gonna have it's a show. Why would you? Why would any DOS? Why would any um, American Black DOS watch a Lovey show? Why? I don't get it. Well, that was going to be my next point. As a next step, as far as, like, what's the action, I think that we need to sort of discuss, which you're, you're starting that conversation, what are the terms of engagement? And I think as a next step, we need to approach Shonda, um, who is developing her book into a show, and show her these posts and say, you know, there is at least an apology that's deserved here because the uh, response article that Lovey wrote, I think, earlier today didn't include any type of apology at all, was total gaslighting, totally sidestepped the issue, and was much, very much in the same vein of what Amanda was saying with sort of throwing up this universal blackness as a distraction. So I think as a next step, we need to approach Shonda, Breaking Ground family, and say, you know, listen, this person needs to be held to account. Well, um, and, and, and I'm going to go further. I'm going to go further, fam. I'm not accepting no apologies because I know you're a fraud. I'm not accepting no apologies. Like right, I, I'm, right, not, I'm just right, gonna tell you off top. Like this up. stuff you gonna do is gonna fail because I'm not watching it, and I'm gonna right. encourage everybody who watches me or everybody not to watch this this crap because she's a she's a crappy person. She needs to go do her own show. And and you know when you talk about it's a Nigerian elitist and me, it's Nigerian. Well, do a Nigerian elitist and show elitist show and see how that plays exactly. out. But you don't want to do that because you know we cool. That's why you came here and you extracted from the culture and you used it in school and you figured out how to do all this black stuff. That's why you did it. I just need you to know I'm not doing it. I'm not riding with it. Just like I, you know we we ride with this insecure stuff. See, you don't. I don't think we understand, fam. Like this is shutting us all out. Like there, there could be a little girl from Absolutely. Chicago, that's a little girl from Jersey, Mississippi, who could have a show. To. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then the second point, very quickly, is the 2020 census. So the okay. 2010 census basically asked, very straightforward, very simple: Are you black, African American, or Negro? No other option. No um, option to clarify at all. The 2020 census is asking if you are black or African. African American, and then it's asking you to write in your origin. And so I feel like, not the Breaking Brown family, but unfortunately, DOS in general, we're so confused that you're going to have DOS people say, okay, well, I got my 23 and me. I'm putting down Nigeria, Benin, um, <laughs> people putting down Africa, Egypt, Wakanda. But you know what they won't do. At the same time. Fam, listen to me, so, fam. But you know what they won't do, right? Like, like the, the highest concentration of the my whiteness was Irish. They won't mark down I'm part right, Irish, right, but they're gonna mark right. down all the stuff that comes from Africa. <laughs> right. Right. And then at the same time you're gonna Lost. have second generation immigrants who are either more assimilated or maybe who have parents who come from two different, you know, non American countries, they're gonna be putting down in a lot of cases African American. So I would love to delve deeper into what the twenty twenty census means for GOS, because I've heard so many times people say, well, my parents are Nigerian and I was born in America, in America so I'm literally African American and don't question me about that. So I think, you know, given the fact that it plays so much into resource allocation, into politics, into marketing, into so many parts of our daily life and our future, that there needs to be a deeper examination of what this new format in the 2020 census might mean for us, if anything. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. I, 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 agree. I really, I really wish people. Could, I will. I will say this, fam. I really wish people didn't have to self-identify. I really wish we could use the records of their parents and their records, their immigration Absolutely. records, or their parents' Absolutely. immigration records. And, and if you have no immigration records, then you, 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 you just hear. And you just is what you is. I really right. wish we could just use the records as opposed to like, I always find it kind of problematic. I think it's an improvement though, because I need to ask that question. But I think it it's, I, I always find it problematic when people have to self-identify, especially if you, if you immigrate, immigrated here, uh, if your parents, Im parents immigrated here, there has to be a record. And I wish we could access those immigration records and use those for people who immigrated here first or second generation and, and then have everybody else self-identify. But well, but you know, it, it is what it is. Yep, yep. Well, that's all, and I appreciate what you're doing, and this is a very important topic, and I think that our posture needs to change in terms of having our pride, 
knowing our history and setting those rules of engagement. I appreciate it, fam. I appreciate you reading those tweets because I hadn't heard those. You get real loose. Like, I would never get that loose in Nigeria talking about somebody else's culture. I would never get loose like that. I never would. It just would never, you know, I just would never do it. Especially with everything that we're going through. With everything that we're going through in America as DOS. And we're going to listen. Man, y'all don't stop. Listen, I'm coming to 513. 513, what's your name? Where you calling from? And what's on your mind? Oh, thank you for taking my call, Dr. Cornell. This is Denise from Cincinnati, Ohio. I love you so much. Love thank you. Show. Love you back. Thank you for standing for me and my ancestors. Got Listen, you. Thank you for standing for me and my communities in my city. They just made it illegal to have tent cities or be homeless. Uh -huh. So you got 10,000 mostly black males sleep just in the street, on the corners, here and there. But they can't stand on the corners at the entrance of freeways and beg for money like the white boys get to do. What? Um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so appalled at the scavenger nature that social media has taken in the form of exploiting black American pain for entertainment. Mm. And I think that people like, um, this is you discussed on the online, you know, when you talk about Nigerian politics, they're the most corrupt. You never hear them talk about President Jonathan and how they steal not some of the money, all of the money. So one of the um, senators with like $4 million in his living room, hidden up under his bed. He did. You know, he did. They were marrying six-year-olds and nine-year-olds because of, you know, Quranic law and giving the girls fistulas. So most of the girls were dying at... 15 and 16 years old, if you look at the Libyan slave trade today, the highest African nation population is Nigerian because of the Nigerian human traffickers working with the um, people to get them out of Africa to Europe. And they trick them into slavery to today. You know, when we talked about Christianity even being the white man's religion and yet run to the Yoruba religion, that was the culture that said, sell your child to the Babalao. They do it still today. So when they come over here with that Nigerian pride, what are you exactly proud of? Yep, I agree. And let me just say one thing. Somebody told me, and I haven't checked into it, that the lovey at some point made fun of ghetto names, right? And and, and what I want to say is y'all had a president named President Good Luck. President Good Luck. And right. and why don't you make why don't you make fun of President Good Luck? What kind of what kind of fool names people Good Luck? And all kind of weird names like that. See, but you don't want to do that. You want to come here and traffic and make fun of us and everything that we're experiencing is the consequence of your people selling us here. Like our own Africans selling us over here and, and what happened to us. No, that's not good enough. And even their own cultural corruption till this day is destroying Nigeria, yeah. which is why they have to immigrate out. Yep. President Jonathan can't find a hospital in Nigeria to be treated at. He has to go to the United Kingdom. There is no hospital that the uh, Nigerian doctors can work at and get the same income that they demand here in America. It's impossible. Meanwhile, we're here, descendants of slaves, mass incarceration has destroyed our families. We have a music industry and an entertainment industry, excuse me, again, that is, they are, they are making money off of an entertainment industry that is encouraging our children to kill each other for mm. wealth, for that car. They're making money off of the inter they're making gossip sites off of the entertainment industry that's saying your girls need to strip to go to college, you know, yet they'll have a Nigerian wedding and make it rain as if that's okay because it's African culture where they have this extreme wealth and at these weddings, they have these extreme weddings, just like they have crazy rich Asians, they have crazy rich Africans. Yeah, they do. They really do. Majority of their income, when you know it is their the politic they play in our communities, if they are in our communities, they have these liquor and cigarette and tobacco stores, you know, that sell things that have no nutritional value, adding to our food deserts while Flint, Michigan goes 1,500 days without clean water. You know, and these people, I think because they think they're cute. But as you get wrong in a tooth, people are going to expect you to have some intelligence behind that fading beauty. 
And so these fake people like Angela Rye and Amanda Spears with these fake social commentaries and these fluff articles of things that make nonsense and no sense to any impact of our daily living. I mean, like, we, the bottom is falling out in our city. They literally took $10 million from the working class poor housing, eradicated that housing, and built million-dollar condos on communities that were formerly African-American, which means our voting district, which was already gerrymandered, so that Steve Shabbat, who was our representative um, in Congress, forever be a Republican district. Mm. As long as the people are transient and homeless, we are forever a Republican district. The gerrymandering in, uh, in Ohio is what got Trump in. And, you know, no matter what sexual, what what he might do, Congress is not going to impeach him because of who, rep, who is being represented in Congress. No taxation without proper representation. And how can you tax the people who are constantly working, constantly stressed out, constantly looking for affordable housing, um, quality food, accessible food? And these people don't talk about that stuff. No, um, I agree. All black one. I agree. And one of the things Either we have race, to... We, talk about mimicking us. Yeah, when, when you talk about Nigeria, one of the things I will say too, Carla, is that a lot of these people don't talk about it because they got family in these administrations. Like, they got family in government. So part of the reason when we talk about why you don't talk about your government and why you don't, because they got family in there, but they don't want to talk about that. They, they don't want to talk about that's where you get part of your money from. Like, all of this stuff, all of the stuff that's happening is just like, we, we just getting scammed. We just getting scammed and scavengered. And by the time we as a group realize it, like, it, it just, I swear to God, it, it broke my heart when I saw that little 60-second garbage, you know, uh, confused rant got like a million likes. It was just like, what's wrong with everybody? Or is everybody crazy? I appreciate you for your focus and dedication and Thank keeping you. us politically informed in this modern age. It is very hard to navigate this, especially with all this social media and commentary and how they, like Antonio be telling us, this entertainment industry is masking our failure and masking our very real poverty and very real poverty that is going to impact our children if we don't wake up to what America owes us in particular. Our people, the descendants of slaves, people who ran from the South to Chicago, people who built the Black Wall Street, it got bombed. People who did the move, it got bombed. Where our government has actively yeah. participated to keep us in this um, more economic state. So I thank you, uh, Dr. Yvette Cardell. You, you I appreciate awesome you, I, I appreciate you so much. I thank appreciate you. So much. you. No, and thank you. I, I just want to continue. <laughs> thank you. That was an informative call, fam. I appreciate it. I appreciate that call. That was an informative call, President. Good luck. But don't nobody say nothing about that. Don't nobody say nothing about that. Don't nobody. Don't nobody. It's not even an issue. It's not even a problem. I'm gonna try to bring up a. a, a uh, I'm gonna try to bring up a couple of images real quick, but yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just almost insane. I'm gonna take two additional calls after this call, but I mean, it's just, it's so insane to me. Like the way in which we have allowed these people to kind of just skate, dude, they just skate on us. Like it's not like they're just skating on their own. No, you just skate. It don't matter. You skate on us. And like we don't say anything, we say, well, you know what, Yvette? I think I I, I think I don't be asking you what you think, but you tell me. I, I I think we just all in it together. What evidence do you have that we all in it together? What evidence has this life ever sent you to make you believe that we all in this together? I'm just trying to figure out, cause I ain't never seen it, and I pay attention. So I'm gonna try to bring up some images real quick, fam. Just bear with me a second. Because I know the person um, talked about some tweets from Lovey. So, you know, people show themselves. There's no way. Like, the, the, people always show themselves, fam. Like, if there's one thing we have to know, that it's just we just have to know that people always reveal themselves. And the only thing you really have to do is wait around for the big reveal. And when the big reveal gets there, you just got to be there to know what it is. And you got to react. You just can't be like, well, the big reveal is here. I'm not going to do nothing about it. I'm not going to make no changes. I'm not going to navigate my life in a way that, like, understands that. Or, like, you, you can't do it that way. That's not a way to do it. So, I, 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 I you know, I, I appreciate all the callers. And I, I'm going to take a couple more calls before we go. But everybody, like, we're seeing it. Like, somebody brought up, um, what is that? Um, Lovey and the, her disrespect of um, 
What is that? Oh my God. Look at this. Look at this. Like, look at this. This is the person that y'all are elevating. Shuck and jive game proper. Now she ain't don't come from slaves or nothing. Looks like slave tap dancing over hot coals. Now this is before she put the mask all the way on. See, this is 2009, 2010. This is before you put the mask all the way on. The mask is tight now, but you done had a man. Slave tap dancing. Come on, man. Here we go, 2011. 2011, on the eighth day of Kwanzaa, my true love gave to me a dashiki from the beauty supply. You just got, you just an awful person with really awful taste. This stuff ain't even funny. It's, I ain't gonna lie. I will not be encouraging my, t my kids to attend the HBCU. It's the African elitist in me. You should just go home though. So I'm going to uh, 617 now. 617, what's going on? Uh-oh. Hey, that is Reggie. What's going on? What's going on, Reggie? Hey, I, I appreciate you uh, getting me in, man. I was going to show, but I'm, I'm a little fired up. Um, but, you know, to, to that brother from Guatemala that called, uh, mm -hmm. thank you. The My Jamaican sister who called, thank yeah, you. Yeah, the allies are wonderful. I really appreciate allies out there that's holding us down um i got people out out here in boston you know the, the sister from panama who's organizing politically for reparations here so the mm. allies are out there but we got some knuckleheads out here too yeah and, and, the, and the tragedy the tragedy with you know what they're trying to call an analysis from folks like you know Issa ray and amanda you would think they never went to school like both of them majored in African American studies. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like this rant rant that she did was nonsensical and, and, and Lovey's blog today it's just like they're making these emotional arguments and I'm I'm looking at rants like these, I'm like, I don't know what's going on in these African American studies departments. Like what are they reading? And like, like and like, and I'm, like I'm, and like she went like um like what? What you really realize is that, that there's like this whole thing that that you all are better and you're more prepared. Like Lovey came right. Like I, I I remember reading like um her book like I I'm judging you and it was awful. Like for another show I did uh, like in 2016. Like and it's just like it was awful and it's just like you all get all this credit for being smarter but you ain't. And like the problem is nobody told you is like you you kind of slow. Like and nobody wants to say like you're at best you're like below average. And, like, nobody wants to say that to you and you get the benefit of that stereotype. Even her thing today, like, how do you, like, either you're stupid or you think I'm stupid. Because nobody said you weren't black. So saying that this is about blackness misses the point. So either you're stupid or you think I'm stupid. Either you're just throwing a straw man my way or you don't know enough to know that what you just argued was a straw man. Like, either you, one of the two things is true. And I'm a graduate of HBCU. So you said you wouldn't send your kid to one, but you sound, you sound like a, a graduate of a Koopa Loopa Koopa. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Like, what are you talking... Like, how... Like, the way we've allowed these people to navigate some type of elitist space when they don't even have the capacity to be there. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's like... I, like I said, I don't know what's going on in these universities. It's like, I'm, I'm so glad I'm a college dropout at this point. <laughs> it's emotional arguments that I'm... Yeah. It's, it's, it's like... It's, I, I, I'm going to say it like this. Like, at, at, at this point, just what I've been seeing coming out of these universities especially when we're talking about African-American studies, I don't want to hear about your degree no more. I want you no. to tell me the last book you read, mm, the last yep. study you read, the last data that you looked over. If you can't do that, if you can't show me your bookshelf, what you, what you just read, you can't talk to me. Because the, these folks running around with these degrees are useless. It, 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 is, it is a tragedy. Like I said, I'm a college dropout. It's a tragedy that I'm running around schooling politicians and PhDs. It makes no sense. Mm. What are y'all reading out there? Oh. Pick up some books and get into this data. All right. It, 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 there's no reason that this, that this should be happening. It's like, like you said, especially at, at the HBCUs. Yeah. And, 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 and she, was, she, you know, she was pointing out earlier on, on the gram, and you, you touched on this, that the, the immigrants came here before. You know, it's like, but she, y'all need to understand something. Like, these people came during the civil rights struggle, during civil rights. During Jim 
Quo. If you came here after the fight was over, you can't talk to me. Ooh. Garvey, Garvey, Garvey came here with something in his hand. Shirley Chisholm came here with something in her hand. Belafonte Portier came here with something in their hand. The other African countries that gained independence during that time were reaching out to us, came here with something in their hand. You don't get to talk to me if you're just coming here with your hand open just to take stuff. Like, what uh -oh. are you actually contributing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Reggie. You, you, don't, can't don't talk to you can't talk to me at the... DOS and their allies made it safe for you to come outside in the first place. Look at the numbers on the spike in black immigrants post-civil rights. It exploded. Like, where were you at before? You knew I was here. Where were you at? You see what I'm saying, Yvette? Yeah, you know I see what you're saying. You ain't got to tell me twice. Yeah, and, and, the, the, uh, and, and, I, and I, I would just, you know, just kind of double down on what, on, on what you were saying and, and just to answer this question, because I, I get it a lot in the discussions I'm have, having. It's like, who are you to get to tell me to be black and how do you tell me what blackness means and who gets to say who is what? I, I'm, I'm just going to make it clear and you can deal with it and you cannot deal with it. The African-American who descended from shadow slavery in the United States is the sole arbiter of what blackness means in this country. If you or your ancestors got your post civil rights, you get to talk after me. If you are African and you are not rooted That's the back of the line right there. You do not get to talk to me. That's the back of the line right there. If you do not have a great grandmother or grandfather buried here, I don't want to hear from you about what blackness means here. There's a specific history, experience, culture, politics, all of that that comes from our generational experiences in this country. You either align with that and defer to us or you're taking up space. That's all I got to say. Boom! That. That's, That's it. it. I appreciate you, Reggie. That's it. That's it. You either align and you help us or you just taking up space. You don't get to lead. You don't get to dictate. You don't get to create something new. We already created the space for you to be here. You get to either align with us, and that means fall back in line. You're not going to be in the front of the line, boo-boo. Bop, bop. Fall back in line, or you're just taking up space. I'm going to 310 right now. 310, I'm coming to you. <clears throat> what up, Yvette? What's up, Tom? Yeah, this is Antonio. I guess I'll be the last call. You know, uh, I don't, I, you know, I just start off. Idris Elba, David Awalu, Chita Wally Ojafor, Love You Ajaya, Issa Rae, and the list goes on and on, and I don't think we understand the consequence of them not understanding who we are. I mean, the audacity and the, of, of the possibility, I'm not going to say I know, but I mean, when you look at all of the things that line up, the audacity that the man who played Dr. Martin Luther King in Selma could have had a family that sold blacks and slaves, and no one has looked into it. No one has given us an answer. It's, it's atrocious. Yep. That we went out and supported Black Panther about a Wakanda that was protected by a, a, a mimic of the Benin King, the Dahomey Benin King, about slave trading us into the transatlantic is awful. And I, I come back to, to Reggie's statement. You know what? He said, where were they at? You know, the booth. Reggie, that's because they didn't let him here before 1980. They didn't let him in the country. I'm not talking about right or wrong. I'm telling you, this booth is not, like, this is not accidental. We were way too confrontational. You have to watch my interview with Sandy Garrity from Duke. And what he says about that, that admissions officer, a name, that Duke, who says, I choose. I choose immigrants because they would be docile. We don't want to deal with the politics of black folk. We stand here at the edge of a, 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 a cliff like you've never seen. The article just came out from Clark. Bunch of parents went down there. They told them it was going to be 4,000. You know, the gap was 4,000 for the board, for the child staying at the school. And it became 8,000. Mm. You got to write the check. You gotta write the check. The only thing that will get you the money to write that check is reparation. And these people are in the way of that reparation. Mm. You make a choice. You can sit and watch Insecure and play, or you can wake up to the reality that Barack Obama, the name I left off that list, did nothing for your reparation. He left your child in the car.
homes, driving Uber at night, huddled up in, in a car, hoping to do something with their degree. He said nothing about student loans. He said nothing for black people. I don't think y'all get it yet. I was got a kid. Evento got a kid. Those kids are stars because these people are part of the problem. I'm not playing. You can sit up and laugh and giggle and watch your viewers and support Lovey and everybody get a chance and let this lady all in the door and let you know whatever rent. Or you can go read the cover of law. You can go read the cover of law. I'm interviewing Richard Rothstein next week. Uh, October 6th, I think I got interview. I don't get paid to do that. I do that so y'all can have information. I interviewed, I believe Byron is now the third richest African American in the in the nation. I've interviewed him and gave y'all the ten things that most people don't share with y'all. Interview Sandy Darius, Thomas Shapiro. And you gonna put up some lady who's just talking? Or loving? She don't know nothing. Look at those tweets. Those tweets that have you tweet Shonda Rhimes tomorrow morning in mass that you do not want this lady to have a show with those tweets. But will you do it? Will you do it? Yep. Do you understand the importance of an anchor culture? See, an anchor culture allows you to do something that I can't do. See, my mama from Mississippi, Brooksville. My daddy's from Alabama. I don't got no secondary outlet where I can just take it out and make it, you know, make it about Seneca Lee or make it about Granada or make it about something else other than these black folks right here under my feet. I tell you all this stuff. I do all this data. You know that be likable with the people I know. No. I'm putting concepts together that ain't nobody put together ever on the internet or in academia. Ain't nobody talked about bully dating or anchor culture or any of these concepts. You tell me why. Look here. I'm going to tell you like it is. Y'all going to need reparations. Ain't no other man. Everybody nope. say, what's the solution? I'm telling you the numbers are too gap. Like, you, you can't make it up with labor. You're not going to get no inheritance. You need, you need a positioning. But these people don't want you positioning. When I say these people, there's no new immigrant, including Barack Obama, that wants you positioning the way that we're trying to position. It's not in their interest. Yeah. It's not in their interest that they're sending you know, a Nigerian or a Grenadian for American DOS to come up with that title and say to the American government, you, deserve, you must preferentially position us based on being American DOS. Mm. So then why are you aligning yourself with this? Mm. See, see, the, the girl on the, on the thing, I've never even seen her talk before, but what she was talking about is speaking for black women. So black women, this is the challenge to you. You can watch Insecure and have a good time about relationships, or you can read this article about Clark and realize reparations take preference, because your kid is about to get kicked out of Clark. I'm saying to you that this is more than blackness, this, you know, concept of blackness. This is about a question that we should ask interest. And love you. And Issa. And Barack. And everybody. Well, just get your family get involved in this life track. And if they did, what was their role? Mm. We should have been asked that question. I don't know how me and they are the first people to bring that to the table. Yep. Because it's, it's just as important as asking any white person. And if they say no, I don't let them off the hook. What, what were they doing to position you so well? I just kind of want to know. <laughs> you got to start asking these questions. We have allowed people against us to speak for us. But Barack Obama's comments about reparations to Tama Hazi Coates were not only unacceptable, they were ignorant. I don't care that he was the president of the U.S. He don't understand the U.S. from those comments. Do you understand what we built here? What we are here? Our bodies provided all of the wealth. Our bodies provided all of the advantage. And now our families have all of the cost. There are more black men, African American, DOS men incarcerated than all women globally. And we talking about, well, that must be more crimes. That's not about crimes, dude. It's only 20 million, I'm talking about 20 million people producing more prisoners than 4 billion people. That's about a systemic choice to take the same group that went into slavery and make them the outlet for all this lack of opportunity during that. I just kind of wanted to just chime in because a lot of people talk. A lot of people talk and they don't have enough basis. Mm. They need to go read that color of law, color of money. They need to get in the, in the re reality that. I'm going to say 
that is like anchor culture outlet day. You know what I'm saying? If you need to like buy culture, all this stuff, no, you need to win it this way. And if you ain't with it, that's okay. Just don't make no more shows and, and don't make no more tweets. And y'all, pull up the lovey tweets on the way out too. Because it was crazy. You know, African elitists and all these tweets about, about Kwanzaa and the supply store. These people make it better. Yeah, they, 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 they get it. Yeah, they absolutely, they, they absolutely are. They absolutely are. All right, Tom, I appreciate you. I'm, I mean, as usual, I mean, y'all saw the tweets. Y'all saw the tweets. Just making fun of how lost we are, and just revealing yourself as an elitist. That's the last thing we need, honestly, is more elitist. There we go. I was saying the last thing we need is more elitists. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the music came on, but what, what Tom was saying was that the last thing that we need is like, you know, like he wanted to put the lovey quotes up to just show like the last thing that we need. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Y'all just be dancing. The last thing that that's the outro music. The last thing that we need is the, the is, is more elitist and, and, and it's just, and it's just right. So, you know, I want to, you know, I want to thank everybody. I'm going to have to end it here because we're at like, I think I went a little long. So we're at like two hours and um, we're at two hours and 26 minutes. So I'm going to have to end it here, fam. I appreciate you. Um, and I will put them, I will put the beats back on so y'all can end to some more beats. And please like, please subscribe if you haven't already. Put your libations away. Um. Uh, you go to donatebrown.com, patreon.com slash ycarnell. Hit the bell so you get notified. Also go to subscribe to brown.com and add your name so that just I just have your email address and everything, and I appreciate it. And uh, we'll do this again very, very soon, fam. It just had to happen. It is what it is. Appreciate you. <laughs>